What's going on, you slackers? <laughs> Hi, guys. I see we got a house packed full of people. <laughs> it's fantastic that, you know, people want to get in here and hear about the news and hear about things that are going on that are actually factual and not, uh, you know, not drama. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. I mean, uh, yeah, I think so, Doxy. It says on my end that we've been live for the last 40 seconds. Did it, have we not gone live on YouTube yet? Uh, yeah, it says. Oh, now it says live. So I guess there is a delay. There usually isn't a delay. That's weird. Can you guys hear us now? Anybody there? Bueller? Hi, Jim. Bueller. Bueller. Hey, Jim. What's going on? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, we've been sitting here talking for over a minute now. I don't know why why it was why YouTube didn't start up yet. Yeah, that's weird. Huh. All right. Well, at least we're live now. Hello again, everybody. Hi, Far Q. Hey, Jim. Hey, Far Q. How you guys doing? Doxy and Brittany. It just started for you? Yeah, mine just did that. That was weird. Huh. Well, YouTube must be... Must be acting up again. Yeah, must must be having... Must be having its uh, menopausal period. <laughs> How's everybody Saturday night going? Good. Mine's going good as well. I'm glad. Uh, oh, sorry. I keep getting caught. I keep getting caught up looking at chat every all the time. Hey, Rowdy. And, hey, Rowdy. What's going on? Oh, yeah. yeah you it's guys hard. It's hard not to, though, when because you're so used to be like. When we're not on panel, we're so used to being down in the chats. And I think that's why we, because it's hard not to get caught, caught up in the chat. Yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to figure, we'll have to figure something out. That's why I think, like, for me, I leave, I leave the chat up to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so you, yeah, you can deal with the needy, but. No, guys, um, one of the things that I'm going to start doing uh, for our members only, and it'll probably start this week sometime, i um, going to start doing some member-only lives where we start lo uh, looking at uh, just weird, wild, and crazy uh, videos of just all sorts of stuff. It'll be some haunted houses. It'll be haunted graveyards. It'll be, you know, so on and so forth. So... We'll be doing that for members only because a lot of the times on here, not everybody wants to uh, wants to watch, you know, a lot of those videos. And um, I think it'll be a good time. I think it'll be funny. I think it'll be fun. You know, we'll watch some of the uh, like world's craziest accidents, um, just stuff like that. You know, not not brutality type wise, crazy accidents, but holy crap, look at that or all that kind of stuff. Um, and we'll start doing that, or I want to start doing that for the, uh, for the members and just kind of start having some fun with, uh, with some of that stuff and start giving our members something to, you know, look forward to and to, to, uh, have for being a member. Um, right now, currently there's no kind of like, uh, uh, what is that? What word am I looking for? So I. Incentive. incentive there's no incentive to really be like a member or anything like that so to go out and or to have lives where we can joke around and have some fun and you know watch crazy wild stuff and not have to worry about 
what we say or how we say it or any of that kind of stuff because you know it'll be just members of the channel watching it you know i know in a lot of these lives where you got people lurking and and you don't know who's here and you don't know what to say and you don't know who's going to clip what or do what which my channel don't really get clipped ever to be honest so um you know that's not something that really has to be worried about over here but still you know it's kind of a fun place for the the members to get and to ha for us to have fun and joke around and like i said i like to look at the paranormals or mysterious spots throughout the world or all that kind of stuff so um i'd like to do it behind what would quote unquote be a paywall so that i'm not just like uh copywriting the hell out of you know uh um a live stream and all that stuff so yeah that just give that i just wanted to start out real quick to throw that out there a minute uh in 10 years what oh like what it will look like in 10 years or if this happens what the world would look like in 10 years yeah i like that kind of stuff if that's what you're talking about our kid yeah and that's what I, and those are some of the things that i'd like to get into and just have fun with it so and i know sway likes to have fun with that kind of stuff oh yeah and i was going to talk to you about it before the live but we were talking about so many other things we were already like 10 minutes late and i was like all right well the 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 company meeting is over <laughs> but and i don't think that i didn't think that would be a one that you would uh disagree with because you enjoy those kind of things too and yeah yeah so i like it but yeah so we'll do we'll be doing member only lives where we'll be covering not covering watching stuff like that and, and having fun and joking around and laughing um a little bit more and having like a little more of a free spirited uh bit of time um but anyways i hope everybody's uh saturday night is going good oh shit What's RQ, be careful Sage yourself a hundred thousand times before you go. Oh, and oh, and, a, and after you're done, and after yeah. you're done, <laughs> don't don't trust in just carrying a cross on you. Oh no no, get <laughs> some but, holy water too while you're at it. Right, and see that those are the things that uh, you know I want to watch videos of, and you know me and Sway when. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Sway did say the, the the two words. That's right. See, Sway? I'm sorry. That's why when you say it, I'm like, what? But Which two um, words is it, Brittany? <laughs> but we, uh, me and Sway want to do the same things, like just go out to old creepy cemeteries at night. I brought Sway by one of our local cemeteries here in town and She's like, oh, my God, that thing is huge. I'm like, yeah, people are dying to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too far from the cemetery that I saw the, the big girth tree. No, actually, yeah, it wasn't too far from there, but it was it was a ways. <laughs> it must have been all the dead people soil in the ground. That must be stuff. it. Yeah, but that cemetery was really awesome because it had big, huge trees in there on one on that one side. Yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. See, you guys, you guys, you got see, you guys enjoy that kind of stuff too. So if you're not a member yet, make sure you guys join the membership. It we have it as low as two ninety nine. So if you're not a member yet, think about joining. Um, but yeah, I mean. Let's get on to what we are going to talk about tonight. Has anybody been paying attention at all to this this accident? I don't think so because our our views on our last live about it didn't our last two lives didn't even break a hundred. So it's funny that uh, fifteen minutes before she gets to the big girth tree, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but. Um, no, I, it's funny because we don't get near, we'll get three, four, five, six hundred views when we're talking about drama. But when we're talking about actual, you know, serious shit that's going on here in the United States, people are like, oh, no, let's not worry about that. Let's worry about who's, who's, the, who's dicks bigger than who. And it's two females going after each other. So it's like, 
you know. But anyways, who uh put a one in chat if you guys have been paying attention, if you guys have kept up with it or looked into it or have listened to anything since the last live. No, well, there's there's Sway again. <laughs> you guys, Sway's like a, she's a serious addict. Whenever <laughs> anything, it's like the butter stuck. No pun intended, but the butter stuck. The wood stuck. Now the girth is sticking. So. <laughs> now it's gonna be. Wood, butter, and girth are the three <laughs> ingredients Sway needs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Brittany. I would worry about her in the woods as well. That's why, you know, we're going to have to make sure we pick specific locations to where she can't just disappear on me. <laughs> I'm going to have to pick areas that are really... You know, mountainy and high, you know, oh, high well. elevation, because then she won't go anywhere because she's scared of heights. You guys, we were driving through the trails, and I, I didn't real, I didn't know she was scared of heights. And there was, as you guys seen in the video that I posted yesterday, um, there like the there's cliffs just all over the place, and the one that we were driving literally two foot from like if she opened up the door and stepped out she would fall off fall off the cliff so like you know there's a, a road that's right well not even a road it's a dirt path or a two track what we call it um right next to on the that runs along the ridge and i didn't know she was scared of heights and she all of a sudden looks out the window and she's like holy shit. and i'm like what's the matter <laughs> And then I'm, she's sitting there. She's like not looking by the window and like covering her face. I'm like, oh, you're scared of heights, huh? So I had to mess with her a little bit. So. Yes, it was. That was that was quite the ride. Let me tell you guys. And that was only one ride. That was, we didn't <laughs> like that was all within one ride. Yeah. We didn't even we didn't even go numerous numerous rides. So imagine the stories that will be coming if she ever moves over here. Oh no, they are fun. They are fun. They are very fun. Yeah, he did Especially a good job. He you... did he did a good job driving. I just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean you guys saw Bubba in that video yesterday. I mean, I didn't do an up close and personal look at him, but if you guys looked at him, he is dented. He's got he's got a whole <laughs> sway saw. It. He's got a whole body print <laughs> in the side <laughs> of the truck. Uh, one of the mirrors is ratchet strapped on. Like, thank God I only owe three grand on that truck left. <laughs> that uh, that boy, he don't got much left in him. <laughs> see that's the thing though i guess you guys it's lucky um no no i like we did do four by four driving like we did do i mean we did do some four wheeling but not not like real bad when there was real bumps and stuff there was one time and i i admit to it one time that my foot i had my foot on the corner of the brake because when you're in in those roads like you want to be on the brakes when you're going like into the pothole or into the, the hole. And then you want to be on the gas on your way out. So you're kind of like switching between the two, you know, just to keep it a nice, smooth, like e easier ride. And uh, my foot slipped up the brakes and hit the gas at the, the way wrong time. And uh, we were like, <laughs> I was like, Oh shit. Sorry. It's like, I swear to God, I did not mean to do that. And, uh, so she did get a moment like that, but the rest of it, like if it, if I know there was an area that was extremely bumpy and like would bounce us all over the place, I, I crept through a lot of that, you know, I was, I was really going slow and, um, you know, for one, I have a bad back, a bad neck, bad shoulders, bad knees. So like all that slamming around and I'm little. So like, there's been times when I've got out there and, you know, 
ha was having a little too much fun, hit a little bit of a hole that would, you know, throw me a little bit. And next thing you know, I'm bouncing off the fucking ceiling in the truck and just get slammed all over the place. And then, you know, I'm, I'm about to be 41 years old. Life, life the next morning doesn't feel as good as it used to when I was in my twenties and was doing that kind of shit. And so to, you know, I, I don't want to do that to myself, let alone slam and sway all over the place like that. So <laughs> I don't, uh, when we're out there in areas like that, I don't, I don't typically, um, gas it up and go tearing around. Now, if it's a flat area through the woods and whatnot, so they knows that I'll smash it through there. Just, uh, yeah. And, and I don't, I don't like any kind of like, um, fast spinning, you know, like you do with, uh, like on rides at a fair or whatever. And <laughs> so we got into a clearing and he was just in circles. And I was like, holy shit. And then he was like, oh, okay, we won't do that no more. And I was like, oh, thank God. And I was like, took a deep breath. And then all of a sudden, whoo, we went, he did it again. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, she said, don't do that anymore. So I didn't do it anymore. I did it the other way. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't the yeah. same. It yeah, he didn't. Same. He didn't go right to left, or you know, start from. I didn't go clockwise. clockwise. I was going counterclockwise. Yeah, we were counter doing something completely different. <laughs> so, but again, those are some of the the crazy times. Like I told Sway, I was like, imagine if you had a phone in your hand right now, recording all this. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> that's no, and that's how you know that I didn't do a bad job, Doxy. She didn't have two black eyes. <laughs> so no, but I those, did lose two bra sizes. Those uh, those ladies stayed contained. <laughs> yeah, you guys should have saw the the booby sling that I showed Sway. Oh my god! You remember those things, Sway? Yes. Oh God, I'm I gotta get show each of you guys one for Christmas. Yeah, I'm gonna show the chat. Should I show the chat? Oh, yeah, yeah, do. Right. Wait, now, ladies, I swear you would not wear these, would you? Serious to God. Yes. Yes, and a semi. Yes, I think my toe. Well, it wasn't broken because I can now move it, but it sure did swell up and turn black and blue. Um, let me find them. They're called ta towels. <laughs> Oh, no. Come on. Enlarge the screen. Okay. Look, ladies. These aren't, like, just, hold on. This, just think about this. Let me. Oh, Lord. This is going to be go. interesting. There. <laughs> See, they go, they go around your neck, right? They go oh, back around your neck, and then there's elastic that's through here, you know, along the bottom, along the bottom ridge. So you just, you tuck that underneath, you tuck that underneath, the, 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 the boobies get held in here. <laughs> and then in the back, back here, there's a cinch strap. So you cinch it, to, and it lifts them up as high as you want to lift them. They're, it's all nice and cloth. Um, you know, because I know like you guys get those, those, those wire marks and stuff in the middle and along the back, along the sides, some of you larger, larger set ladies, I mean, chest set ladies. Um, I'm just saying, uh, you guys, I'm just saying, uh, okay. No you're saying no. way. I'm just, you guys are saying no. Okay. That I'm just saying, <laughs> no, it does go to videos of ladies putting these on. Like I'm telling you. The only reason why I saw this was a TikTok of a lady trying on like different size of these. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, there's no way this is a thing. Like these are real. And then I brought them up. And so I'm just saying it, 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 it is like the new age booby holsters. <laughs> I'm just yeah, saying. And he was like, Hey, Sway, I think you should, you should try this out. And I'm like, Oh, hell no. There, uh, the names of the I just I, the what is the name of them? Hold on, 
what are they called? That would hurt the neck really. I just, them. I just call them, I just call them the boob slings. <laughs> um, it says they're a, they're called the women's sexy soft boob sport bra. So I'm just saying, you know, I thought it was interesting. You know, they're it, um, okay. You guys know better than I do. I mean, I don't have them, so I didn't. I don't know. I'm just saying. It, it seemed like an interesting concept. Okay, guys. Sorry, I was just looking out for you, ladies. Just you know, whatever. Throw me in front of a semi, then. I'm sorry. Goodness gracious. They're not even older. They're like. They're almost over the shoulder boulder holders. Oh my god, could you imagine the neck the neck pain alone? Okay, I don't know. I just thought it okay. Okay. <laughs> the only I wasn't thinking of that really. I was thinking because you guys have like lower back pains, you guys have like wire marks, you guys have like where it you where to like keep them in and stuff you gotta tighten your bras and so like the sides get uh marks you know like the sides dig in and then the straps that go over the shoulders dig in like i've been married before i know the bit the bitch, bitching and moans about uh um all that stuff so like those that takes away everything except for oh sorry it's gonna hurt your neck like my yeah. bad my bad Right. So you guys go through torture. Now imagine just having a couple of saddles to put them in. <laughs> it would be just, fine like, if they could figure a way to do it without being across the neck, the back of the neck. But it's not. Uh, well, yeah, I get that. I don't. I don't know. But I don't know how they could. I mean. Yeah. I mean, whatever. It just. It was an interesting idea. Like I said. Okay. Okay. All right. I was just trying to look out for you, ladies. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. That we, okay. we appreciate it, Killshot. I would. That's not content that I watch. It came up on. It wasn't even a TikTok scroll. It was a Facebook. It was a one of the Facebook reels. And if you guys want to tell me to switch my Facebook reel, tell Sway to switch hers too, <laughs> because she's always sending me shit that's in mine, and I'm always sending her shit that's in her that's in hers. So. If you're telling me to change mine, tell her to change hers too. She's not innocent in any of this. I would <laughs> never. Would do you guys really believe that I would send inappropriate stuff? No way. See, see, Gem so, so, uh, sells bras. So, okay, we got an expert in the chat. Well, all you guys are technically experts. Yes, but. But I do not believe the way that they measure for bras. I think they like totally missed the boat on how when they measure your for your bras. Hey, Rowdy wants your phone handed over. <laughs> okay. But it has a lot of bad things about Ernie in it. But <laughs> Fark you. <laughs> Fark you is one of the free spirited. She's like, I haven't worn a bra in years. Oh, I wish I couldn't. I wish I didn't have to. Well, she probably would she probably just doesn't. Yeah, but there's just no way I could walk out in public. No way. I have to say that I am I'm very happy that I'm not a man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm editing that out right now. <laughs> Jesus. Somebody clip it. Clip it right now. Ooh. Farm views off of that. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Just said he's not a man. <laughs> Fuck my life. No. I am very happy and glad that I'm not a woman. Just because of the fact that, like, you guys go through some shit. And, oh, like, yeah. I have always said that my whole life, you know. And... It's and I I do I feel sorry for you I feel bad for you guys I have um you know I, I have empathy for you I, I mean I don't want to act like I know what you guys are going through or want to even relate to it that's why I don't like do those 
Oh, do you want to know what it feels like to have a contraction? No, not at all. No. <laughs> hey, that could be one of our one of our videos, Killshot. Oh, that well, that's fine. We can do that, but I mean, you'll have to edit out the part where I shit my pants. <laughs> Cause I ain't gonna be able to do that. Like, I'm a bitch. So yeah, gems gems in here sizing up everybody's boobies. <laughs> Jim's like, I got your girl. I girls, I got your girls. <laughs> or girls, I got your ladies. Just not your lady bits. That's right. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> We're getting into it. No, I mean, if I wore one of those things that make you have uh uh contractions, oh no way. I would I would do more than shark. <laughs> It would not be a shark. It'd be a full out shit. So, if you've ever had a kidney stone, oh, I have. Yeah, it's 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 about like that. I think having it passing a kidney stone though is a little bit worse than labor. But well, I had I had a kidney stone that they had to go in and get. So and they break had. It up. No, 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 no. They didn't do the breaking up. Of, well, they did do the breaking up uh, once they were in there, but they had to go in through my hoo hoo. <laughs> and my, uh, I was knocked out for it, obviously, but oh my God. Afterwards, was, oh my, yeah. Yeah. Trying to pee was pee. like, Ugh. oh man, I wanted, I, well, it's not that I wanted to. I cried several times. And they give you like this medication so that when you actually do go to the bathroom, it's supposed to numb things, but it doesn't do that. They're liars. Uh, yeah, I had to wear a catheter for 14 freaking days because of a freaking kidney stone. Now that well, was miserable. Well, back in the, back in the day. Oh, shit. I just dropped a lit cigarette in between my seats. Oh, shit. Hope I don't grab the lit end. Okay. I think we're good. If you, see, if you hear me start yelling, that just means the truck cut off fire. Oh shit! Um, no, back in the military, way back in the day when I was in the military, so the early two thousands, like the early two thousands, like two thousand one, two thousand two, two thousand three. Um, in those years, the way that they used to do STD tests, they used to put this like little tiny bullet size thing, like it was really tiny, and they used to shove it up your urethra. And then it had these three claws that came out of it. And it was the claws were facing the opposite way of the way that it went in. So, like, on its way out, it would, like, just drag out pieces of your skin out of the inside of it. And then they would test that skin to see if you were, if you had any SEDs. And you had to get that every six months. And oh oh my God. You oh, and they didn't back then. They didn't give you medication to make it feel better or anything like that. They were just like yeah. fuck you, go back to work. Hi SH. Hi SH. How are you tonight? Yes, I had gallstones so bad that they cemented together and made my gallbladder double in size. And so when I had to finally had the balls to go and get my uh, gallbladder removed. They had to make the incision a little bit long or bigger. T- so th- hi, Stacy's mom, so that the gallbladder could come out because it was cemented. Ah, hey, Stacy's mom, what's going on? Um, yeah, no, that's that's not that's not fun. Yeah, no, sorry. I mean, we'll we'll get we'll get to the information. We're we're just getting warmed up here, guys. We're just getting warmed up. Okay. We'll, we'll get we'll get to we'll get to the content. I promise, I promise. Um, Eventually, guys. Yeah, but they went they went in and got my kidney stone. So they they went in through my urethra all the way up through my urinary tract, all the oh. way up to my kidney, because the kidney stone was stuck in the the I don't know what you call it on the way out. Um, so the tubes that go out of your kidney. Oh yeah 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 yep. Yeah. So whatever that's called. In the duct. The, the kidney stone got stuck in there and wouldn't come out and like it was lodged in there so they had to go in there and get it um they were i was i asked them i was like can't you do that like sonic thing and have me pass it they're like we don't know if it would break up into big enough pieces for you to be able to pass and then 
we'd have to go in there and get two pieces instead of one. So we'll just go in there, break it into a couple of chunks, take it all out at one time and call it a day. And I was like, all right, you didn't make any sense, but whatever. Let's get her done. Cause I felt it was awful. I went through several different things for a few weeks trying to find out there. Like I remember I went, there was one day that I woke up and I had a sharp pain in my side and then it went to my my back and i was like yeah. holy shit and i was like what in the fuck is this and at the time and i only lived like 10 minutes from work but the time i left my house to the time i got to work i was in crippling pain and i was like holy shit and it wasn't like it, it wasn't like a can they were like if we want to use contractions as the as the yeah. example like it the contractions come and go this right. was just a constant crippling pain and so like it was it, stuck in the duck duck yeah what yep uh, and so i'm sitting there i'm in so much damn pain i go home and like i call my ex-wife and i'm telling her and well, i'm crying to her i'm like i'm in so much pain i don't know what to do i'm laying on the floor in the bedroom because it's got me in so much pain i can't move and uh she came home grabbed me we went to the hospital and like I was laying on the floor in the uh, in the waiting room and they're like, can you get up and come to the back? I was like, no, you guys can bring a bed out here and get me because I'm not getting up. I was like, I can't move. Like I hurt so bad that every time I move, it's even more pain. I was like, I ain't moving. And so they wheeled the bed out. They came back in and then they got me and then they put me on morphine. Oh, yep, Morphine. I love morphine. Yeah, and so as soon as they put me on morphine, I was like, ooh. I was like, no, no <laughs> more pain. Wee. Yeah, I was like, no more pain. I feel great. Can I go home now? And they're like, no, you got a lot to do. So. Uh, they no. uh, are you talking, um, Okay, yeah, I was going to say I didn't do gallbladder. You did gallbladder. I didn't get to keep my gallbladder or the stones. But yeah, they, I didn't want it because it is. Um, yeah, I, uh, I didn't, they asked me if I wanted to keep mine and I was like, no, I don't need it. They're like, all right, well, we're going to send parts of it off to find out what it is. And mine was just mainly calcium buildup. Yeah. But, all right. So I, we've done enough chit chat and we've been <laughs> going on for about 30 minutes now. So let's, uh, let's jump into it. You got, you want to pay attention to chat? Yep. All right. So we Last time that we were um, looking into this, we looked at the channel, what is going on with shipping. Um, let me let me get the channel's link real quick. Or Does anybody in chat have the link for that channel? Hey, hey, hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. I'm, I like you. Just chill out. Um, here, let me, I'll, I'll drop it in chat. Uh, uh, uh. all right guys we're gonna do that so that's the channel uh, that we're gonna be looking at today and uh if you guys want to know like breakdowns and know um more in-depth detail of all this then go over to his this channel it's called what's going on with shipping uh the link's right there he gives a good breakdown on shipping um what's going on with uh the the baltimore issue and um you know all sorts of different insights that you know that he has because he is he is a professional you know at the highest levels of uh what he could be for this industry. So to hear, hear him talk and to talk about the things that he, uh, he knows it, it's very, it, it's a lot of insight along with a lot of explanation. Um, we'll listen to what he has to say and then we'll listen to the, the um, what you call it. Uh, uh, news. Uh, what do you, the news reports on it? What do you call that? Sway? press conferences uh, or press, press hearings yeah yeah press conferences 
So um, they did a couple of them over the last two days. They did one yesterday and one today. And I just, I, I hate watching press conferences because like when I watch these people are just the, the, the people that are speaking are more worried about like money and what the federal government's going to do and all this other shit. And like, you know, the, the oh, last thing they, reason. yeah, the, the last thing they, they talk about is the actual, you know, the situation that's going on. You know, so um, that's why I kind of just hate press conferences and stuff like that, because they kind of they it, I don't know. It, it's kind of like they intentionally um, uh, make you think about certain things like other things are so important than other. You know what I mean? Like they, yeah. they make you. They make you feel like the the government helping getting all this money is what's more important than, uh, like how, how's the bridge recovered? What are you guys doing for the families of those who's passed away? Um, like they do add all that stuff in there, uh, but they don't. Uh, they don't. Um, they don't prior to prioritize it over. Uh, the money you know what i mean like it, it they always make us the money uh more important than anything else and I, I just don't i don't like it when it's presented that way um a lot of information is there and those are the people that we need to listen to to know what's going on and uh and all that stuff but um i just you know i'm not a fan of listening to the news that's why i would rather go to people like this man here he's uh oh, excuse me i had to burp he's a professional in the field he's the one that the all of baltimore and even podcast and news stations and all that stuff are coming to him to ask him like what happened what went on what is your thoughts what is your theories what is uh what's your expertise on a situation like this? So like, he's the one that, um, um, a lot of people are going to, uh, to find out the information, you know, that they need to find out. They're not necessarily going to news to find it out because again, they only give you what they want to give you off of it. They don't necessarily give you, uh, the news or the, the information per se. So we're going to make sure you guys, like I said, go over to his channel. Um, yeah, if you guys are interested in all this stuff, go over to his channel. Take you know, take a look. If you're interested in the shipping in, in any way, shape, or form, because I'm, I'm telling you there's there was a lot in this video here <clears throat> that he came out with that filled me in a little bit more on shipping. Uh, there was a few points that I talked about in here uh, today or that I talked about in the last one that he's going to actually correct me on today. Uh, so like I said, you know, if, if, if you guys want to know in-depth factual detailed stuff, this would be the, one of the channels that you could go to. Um, and, uh, Brittany, I did see your comment. Yes, he did do, uh, a few videos on the uh, Titan and that stuff and that. So, um, he's he's very informative he gives you very non-biased stuff he just tells you about the situation um he tells you what's going on because it's uh it, it's um he, he gives you what's going on in the situation he doesn't add any politics to it any of that kind of stuff he says this is what happened this is what likely happened this is what could have happened and he just keeps it very factual and detailed and these are the sources that I like to go to instead of sitting there and going to all these other channels like, oh, well, you know, they heard this at this time and it could have been this. Well, what if it was this and it was this and who knows it could have been this. Yeah, but these people are saying it's this, but these people are saying it's that. I, it, all that stuff is just not fun for me. Um, I like to know more of a factual information um, of what's going on. You know, even when I look into conspiratorial stuff. Uh, I look at more reputable people um, for the information. You know, people are like, oh, you can't look at reputable conspiratorial, um, you know, the people that are reputable and conspiracies and shit. And it's like, no, you can, 
because you can actually go to people that aren't doing conspiracies, hear what they have to say about situations like that, go to the people that are talking about the conspiracy, find out what they're saying, and you can figure something out in the middle of what could be true of both. And th those are the ways that I like to do it instead of just going to straight to these drama channels of like in any one of these sectors. It don't matter. I'm not even talking about true crime. I'm talking about all, all over YouTube. It don't matter what uh, community that you're in whether it's uh the flight community or the nautical community or the true crime community or the crime community or the police chase community or it doesn't really matter you know any of these communities that you're in you're gonna have the drama channels um they just exist all over it doesn't matter uh drama cells so that's what they do you know so that's why i say like here I, when I bring information to you guys um, and regarding this kind of stuff, I like to bring you factual information. Not he said, she said shit. Just coming from the straight um, horse's mouth. You know, like the guy that sh just basically knows everything about everything in this area of field. So, <clears throat> um, so the quote unquote black box um, re was recovered from the dolly um it's actually not called a black box it's called the data recorder um which i didn't know that so i thought it was a black box just like everything else but it's actually not um it's a little bit different they'll go into detail here in the video um but yeah so it's not actually a black box it's a, a data recorder and it, it does record everything um you know it, it it records uh who's saying what to who in the uh the ship's uh um control room so i mean it, it'll like if if the captain tells the helm um left rudder 32 degree, the degrees then the helm will say okay you know 32 degrees left rudder and then they once they reach their 32 degrees left rudder the helm the guy that's driving the ship will tell the captain you know that he's reached 32 degrees left rudder and then the rudder and then the captain will repeat it to him um so like on my submarine you know like we had about 25 people packed in the area the size of a uh <laughs> like a, a a really small classroom yeah like, like very very small classroom um and in that area, you know, you had the captain, you had the dive officer, you had the helmsman, the planesman, the chief of the watch, so on and so forth. You know, and for me, because I drove the submarine and I was on the actual steering wheel, um, I was one of the helmsmen or the planesmen. Um, and, you know, during our members live also, I'm going to go into detail about my Navy career and talk to you guys more about some of that. So, again, if you guys aren't members yet, you guys might want to consider becoming members it's it's only 2.99 and uh but during my time when i was on submarines you know our captain or what we would call the officer of the deck um he would sit there and say uh dive which would be the dive officer he would tell the dive officer dive make your rudder left however many degrees right and or make your you know make your rudder left this many degrees and then your depth this many uh, this many feet and then the dive officer will repeat okay make my rudder this many degrees and my depth this many feet i and then the dive officer would turn around which is only like two feet between those two guys and then there's like six inches between me the planesman and the dive officer like we're all crowded on top of each other right there and um if you guys imagine um a uh uh airplane cockpit for like a 737 or like a, one of the big passenger jets if you imagine that there's two people just like you see on an airplane yeah i mean the steering wheel and everything looks the same and then you have one guy that's stationed right between the two of them and to the back, right? Just like right behind them. Now you take those three people and you shove them in together, right? And that's exactly what it looks like when on, on the submarine. But anyways, so the officer of the deck will tell the command to the uh, 
uh, dive officer, the dive officer will tell the command to uh, the helmsman or the planesman. The helmsman or planesman will repeat it back to the dive officer. Then once the helmsman or planesman reaches the dedication that they were given, they will say it back to the dive officer. The dive officer will repeat it back to them and say, I, as that he's acknowledging it. Then the dive officer will repeat it to the officer of the deck. The officer of the deck will repeat it to the dive officer to say that he, and will say I, to say that he acknowledges it. Just so that there's a chain of command there of everyone saying what the other person said exactly and specifically and then saying I to acknowledge that, yes, I heard exactly what you said specifically. And so these data recorders is actually recording all of that in the uh, control room to make sure the steps are actually giving are given correctly. You know, so there there is all of that in there. And I know that was a long way around to getting to what I said there, but I was just trying to give a little bit of information when it comes to that. So, um yeah, we actually have steering wheels, but they're they're more like I said, they are exactly designed like an airplane um, steering wheel. They move and they control exactly the same way as an airplane. So if we push them down, just like you see in an airplane, then you, you know, see the nose of the airplane go down. That's exactly what happens with the submarine. When you pull it up, that's exactly what happens with the submarine. The submarine is essentially an airplane, but in water. A lot of the same um, dynamics apply, but there's a lot of, obviously, different dynamics that apply as well. So, um, yes, they were able to rescue two. There was two survived, six that perished. Um, the six that perished are still down there. Right now, It's they had to call off the, rest, uh, the recovery part of it. Um, they were in a rescue stage, and then when they realized that there was only um, there was only the two that actually survived it, then they called off the rescue, and it became a recovery. And then there was about a day, day and a half there that they were doing the recovery, and it just became too dangerous. Um, you got to remember, there's a whole bridge in the water, um, so uh, on top of a ship. You know, so there's bent, twisted, broken metal all over the place. Um, if they try to start removing vehicles or something that's at the bottom of all that, it could come become very unstable. Uh, so uh, they did pull. Um, oh, they did. OK, they did pull out two of the deceased as well. OK, I didn't hear that part of it. Thank you, Brittany. Um, I didn't hear that part of it. But uh, so they did pull out two of the deceased and then two people also survived. Uh, sorry, you may have said already, but what makes a submarine go and stay down and then what makes it surface? Uh, we pump in water and pump out water. So we have what's called ballast tanks. Um, you can pump them to the front of the boat. You can pump water to the tank in front of the boat or the submarine. Sorry, I we call it a boat, but um, you can pump water to the front tanks on the submarine and it'll make the front end heavy uh and then that'll keep the water down but like i said we have helms and uh helmsman and a planesman which these are um forward and middle uh forward and aft uh imagine putting wings on the instead of the middle of the airplane put it on the very nose of the airplane because we just need to control whether we're going up and down. Um, and then the rudder and everything will control if we're going left and right and all that other stuff. So really it's just the transfer of water from one tank to another to control the weight of the submarine from one tank to another. And then um, when we need the surface, uh, we pump water out of those tanks. And by pumping water out of those tanks, we usually pressurize those tanks by pumping air into the tank which will force the water out of the tank. And then naturally by pumping air into those tanks, they allow the submarine to become more buoyant. Um, so we use water to help sink us. We use air to help raise us along with helms planes and stern planes and a rudder and a propeller. But like I said, you know, I'll go through a lot of that stuff. Um, on our, our uh, I'll go way more into deep detail 
um, on one of our uh, member lives. So, like I said, don't forget to become a member. Uh, but we're going to get into this video. There's been a lot of talking so far. I think I've been talking for like almost an hour already. So let's uh, let's get cracking. Come on. Aspects about ship operation. If you're new, you don't have any idea about how ships operate, I'm going to give you the links to go to that I think will provide you the best information out there. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. So one of the videos I recommend you go take a look at is NTSB on YouTube. They are posting what they call B-roll footage, but it is drone footage. It is people on board the ship taking a look at the vessel. You'll see right here, these are inspectors up on the bow of the vessel of the dolly inspecting it. Notice you see the hazmat uh, a barrel right there. See the bridge across it. This ship has the entire bridge structure sitting on it, including one of the concrete pilings. The ship is actually on the bottom right now because of the weight on the bridge is pushing the bow down. And so salvage of this is going to be a very complex environment. So we're going to do a whole separate thing when it comes to salvage of the vessel and talk about it in some detail. But I just want you to be able to reference this. Go take a look at the full video. They'll take you through the entire bow. You'll see damage on the vessel. Uh, it's pretty pronounced. You'll also notice that up on the bow of all container ships is where the hazardous material is stowed. You'll see some placards here, 1993. That's a flammable liquid. Uh, we don't know exactly what the hazardous material is. This is not unusual. All container ships have hazardous material up forward. This is what you don't want to deepen the ship. So if there's a problem, you could lose the ship. Want it up front so that there is a problem. It can be isolated. And unfortunately, in this case, when you have a collision like this, uh, the hazardous material is the most at risk. So they're going to have to really deal with this first. It is going to take a long process to free the vessel from the bridge structure. You just can't pull it out. It's been sustained heavy damage, and it's going to take an assessment to do it. Resolve Marine is on scene. They're doing uh, their surveys. But this is going to be a process. But the NTSB videos are extremely good. So this is Marine Traffic, and this is... All right, so real quick, um, the NTSB and the Coast Guard are essentially on there um, looking at um, all the damage that's done to it because before they want to start tearing everything off of the ship to be able to move the ship out, um, and no, Doxy, the, the ship's actually not bottomed out. It's, uh, it's pinned um, on the cement structure and like he kind of goes over in here on the reason on why it's not going anywhere and why they don't want to move it anywhere yet but it's kind of pinned against that structure and then it's pinned downwards as well by the uh by the um the structure the bridge itself um also they have a um one of the anchors now so and i'm sure now too uh I, I'm, I don't know. Maybe he'll tell us in this video or maybe they'll tell us in the uh, uh, the news reports or the press conferences that we're going to watch. Uh, I, I believe that the anchors are holding it in place and they want to hold the whole uh, ship in place too because they're, yes, because like Sway said, there is some hazardous uh, material on there. So they don't, so right now they're just kind of assessing the situation. They don't want anything to go anywhere because they don't want it to be any more of a hazard than what it already is. So I, uh, so the, uh, essentially you can look at it as it's bottomed out, but I think it's more that it's actually stuck on the bridge itself. Like it's kind of, it, it's impaled onto the bridge. So it's like not going anywhere. The only thing it would be able to do is drift with the, uh, with the current. And I, I think they want to hold that steady because it would rip and tear a lot of other things apart. So, uh, yeah, there is a lot of moving current. So let's. But no, what I was saying here is uh, what they're doing, too, is they're taking a lot of pictures. And I think they're going to be able to take those pictures and put them into a 3D diagram to kind of be able to look at and tell, OK, this is exactly what we're looking at above water, below water, and all that other stuff. Um, so I think that's why they're on board, uh, taking a lot of pictures, not just for that reason. They're obviously assessing the damage. They're assessing, um, like the NTSB gets on there and they check to make sure that the board, or the board, the boat is uh, ship uh, uh, seaworthy and everything like that to where like 
um if something's gonna break then you know this is what's possibly gonna break uh if we move this this possibly can happen so right now uh they're just really in the assessment stage uh of how they're gonna get everything out of there now uh in one of the videos here in a little bit that we'll see um they actually brought two of the country's largest cranes um in uh that are that are able to work on the work from the water and everything like that to be able to crane these uh pieces and parts out of the water and both of them actually made it to baltimore to the 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 river there to the bridge area where they're needed um today uh the last one came earlier this afternoon and then on top of that they actually started uh work on tearing out some of the bridge already they started on that today um i don't know how much of it uh i don't know what section wh what part how far they are and all that um we'll kind of learn more in the press conference uh i got a quick overview of it i didn't watch the entirety of it but um yeah so we'll we'll keep keep going with this video but this gives um this gives a great overview of just the data recorder itself so there's a lot of other questions that will be answered as we go on through this the the uh, live today or tonight so um you know, I, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can, but I don't want to answer too many questions because it'll kind of take away from the content that I want to show you guys because I can answer them and I have no problem doing that, but I don't always answer them um, 100% correctly. You know you know what I mean? Like factually, I don't use the correct verbiage and all that stuff. So I'd rather hear let you guys hear from the professionals and the experts than from just myself. I know you guys like coming here to hear me talk and hear my opinions on all this stuff and I'll stop and I'll give my opinions and whatnot. Um, but I'd rather let you guys hear from what these guys are saying. And then we discuss that than me try to explain what these guys are saying, because I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of slow. <laughs> I know everything at layman terms. The run through <laughs> of, and I kind of did this the other day, but I want to show something here because something came up and I want to be clear about this. So there was a ship that left just before the Dally did. It was the MSC Toronto. And you'll notice that two tugs sailed out with it. And some people are saying, why was MSC Toronto escorted under the bridge, but not the Dolly? And let me be clear, the tugs that went with the MSC Toronto were not escorting them. They were heading to their, basically their, their, their home base, which is located at Sparrows Point. It's on the other side of the bridge. So that transit was just to relocate the tugs. They were not escorting the MSC Toronto out. So before I do the TikTok here, I want to run through a couple of sites here that I think are really important for you. This is Chief McCoy. Chief McCoy has a YouTube site. He is. Oh, well, kind of. He's promoting some channels here. We'll, we'll jump. Uh, what, what it is, is that uh, this part of the video, like I said, if you guys want to go over to his channel and check it out, this part of the, <clears throat> excuse me, this part of the video shows you um, how you start the main engines of the uh of these types of ships it's not just turnkey or anything like that um with these large engines you have to build up pressure uh that takes time um in instances like that and like this it takes precious time um you air it up like you do a regular boat engine or a car motor or anything like that um also you don't the motor might be tied to the propeller so if the propeller's still spinning from when you tried firing it over the first time or if it's not spinning then you there you know there's all sorts of things that go into it so if you guys want to know how to actually fire up um one of these ships on how to start the engines uh you can refer back to this video here um on his channel and it'll give you an in-depth but for time's sake we're gonna jump we're gonna jump over the the top of it um again this goes into the actual steering of the the ship so we'll go we'll give you guys a kind of idea of that because it, it it does go into a little more detail of what i was explaining to you guys 
Okay, what Chief McCoy is down in the engine room, Brian Boyle is up on the bridge. Brian is an American. He's a second mate. He uh, sails actively. I'm sorry, I just talked to Brian the other day. Uh, he walks you through how you steer and con a vessel. Specifically, he's looking at the mechanics of it, but he has a whole series of videos of what operations are like on a container ship. Again, I'll have any idea about how oh, ships operate. Yeah. I was trying to pause it. Well, no, let's go ahead a little bit. So as you guys can see, that's a steering wheel. Um, when you guys hear these two long lines that you guys can see are the zero lines. Um, so if you have the big line on the bottom lined up with the top line on top, that means you're going straight. Um, the more you turn it to the left or the more that you turn it to the right, then you start counting how many degrees you're going. Um, you might be going five degrees to the right or five degrees to the left. Um, you might be going 32 degrees to the right, 32 degrees to the left, whatever the case and scenario is, that's how you read and function is off of the, the, not the dot, the dial here. Also, there's probably a digital, um, one up top. So that's kind of how you, uh, steer it. Uh, again, the reason why you don't have any tug they this part of the video is why there's no tugs with the dolly um that i mean i explained that in the last video uh things like this there's typically not any tugs uh but we'll we'll explain why and e what will happen even if we even if there was tugs available um and there was tugs on the boat this will show uh how hard it would have been and probably how unsuccessful it would have been even if there was tugs on there so we'll we'll go over this part of the video and it'll explain a little more in the detail um on why there was no tugs on the boat because i know that's a question a lot of people are asking um not just in here the other night but it, they were asked i've seen it in a lot of other videos as well so we'll go over that is out there captaining a tugboat. Now he does a lot of tugs and toes, not so much taking vessels on and off berths, but he did that for 10 years. And so he's got two videos out there that give you really uh, uh, expert perspective on this. And in one of the things, and we've been talking about this among myself and a lot of colleagues and John Conrad, my buddy over at GCAP, just posted a long thread on X about this. You know, the question is not just if you had tugs escorting the vessel out but if you had tugs how to properly use the tugs in this situation if you had a large 5,000 horsepower tractor tug on a line astern of the vessel then maybe you could have helped slow down the vessel but understanding turning a vessel under speed is really difficult so this is a video i did back in june of 2022 this is a vessel called the spar lyra uh it lost its propulsion plant when it was maneuvering around a ship on fire in Norfolk Harbor. This is the spirit of Norfolk fire. Uh, two Moran tugs were on location there and were able to divert and push away the spar Lyra. That Sorry guys. I somehow my mic got muted. So I was talking there for a minute and nothing was happening. Um, so what I wanted to show here. It kind of gives, it, he goes into great detail and uh, he'll explain um, in a minute uh, why why the tugs wouldn't have been as effective as you think. So this ship right here, um, it lost power as well. So the, the same thing happened that happened with the dolly, all right? Um, this ship lost power. Uh, it had no way to steer it had no way to do anything okay so luckily there was two tugs that were there that were able to help steer this ship out of the way um and it'll explain why but look at the rear end of this tug back here okay look how close that is to the water line now everybody will say that, oh that's that just an image uh uh, that's just imaging and what the view and blah 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 no these boats they do have so much power and so much torque that when they're pushing against something that propeller and everything is gonna that that are on these tugs are gonna start digging down into the water and it's gonna push the rear end of these tugs down into the water 
So they are only capable of doing so much. And now listen on, you know, a, a little more on it. But I wanted to show you guys, like, look at the, look at the aft side of these trucks. Their trucks, goodness gracious, these tugs. You know, they're they're nearly in the water. And even look at this one. Look how close the the sides and the bottom is. You know, so just pay attention to that. Or fence you're seeing there that is the barrier gate to naval base norfolk and spiral lyra was on a collision course to hit the uss mason and the oiler usns leroy grumman and it was two moran tugs that responded very quickly to the scene they were able to get lines onto the spiral lyra and help divert the course of the ship You'll see these two Moran tugs doing absolute yeoman work here. I, I mean, they are hooked on and pushing for all their might to get Spar Lyra around. Matter of fact, you're going to see a green buoy where they almost run it down, come by. But something to note here real quick. Spar Lyra is about 50,000 tons at 500 feet. The Lyra, uh, excuse me, the, the, the Dolly is almost 1,000 feet and over 100,000 tons. And so there, there's okay. a you guys heard that, right? It's the the ship that hit the bridge was twice as long and almost what a hundred times heavier. Yep. So these two massive units right here of boats, I'm telling you that you know these tugs might not look big, but if you get next to these bad boys, they are units. All right. These tugs, they, they they generate and can push some power. And here's that buoy that they, you know, that, that you want to stay inside of because those indicate the shipping lanes. So you want to try to stay in on the inside of those buoys. But anyways, um, so that's just for, uh, that's just for uh, reference on, you know, these, these tugs were able to do work for this boat, but even if there was two tugs of this size on the uh, the dolly, you know, it was twice as long and a hundred times heavier. You know, so the, I, I, again, I don't know that the tugs would have even have done any kind of work. There's a lot of, uh, of issues associated with this. Plus, uh, you needed this happened with a little bit more time out in a little more open water. What you're going to see happen here when we go through the TikTok is that the Dolly did not have much time. Now, a big tractor tug, big 5,000 horsepower tractor tug hooked to the stern Remember, is like an option said, that a lot of people are talking you know, about. Yeah, a lot of ports right now are water. really looking at this a lot more and time. debating this fact about whether or not they need tugs on it. But let me be clear, too. One of the reasons you don't have tugs escorting them is they're not required. They are expensive. And as you'll see here, these two Moran tugs put themselves in harm's way to save this situation. They nearly capsized the forward tug, taking water over the gunnel. And, you know, one of the things that has happened in the past with tugs tied to vessels at speeds over, you know, dead slow, two, three knots, is that tugs have been pulled under, crews have been killed, lines have been snapped, people have been hurt. So there is a give and take on this. I'm not saying it should be one way or the other, but it does raise a discussion. To me, the bigger issue is how do you fix the infrastructure? This is an image hey, of the hey, Tampa hey, Skyline hey, Bridge. This is the bridge that got hit in 1980 hey, hey, and collapsed. If you look at the lower image here, this is the Skyline Bridge. This, The second bridge here, the one to the right, is the one that got hit. And you'll notice that there's no barriers around the, the, the bottom of the vessel here where the pilings are. And what happened is a vessel struck the piling and it hit the bridge at such force that it knocked down the center span. And this is them dismantling the bridge. But notice, this is the new bridge that replaced it. Notice around the main shipping channel, uh, there are these artificial islands. There are these dolphins that are stationed all around the area. This is a lot more protection. A vessel can still hit, but the ship, uh, taking a look at... Son of a bitch. Done that a couple times now. Let me get back to the... Where we were because it's very very interesting because you know we have to remember that the the key bridge was built back in the 70s right so back in the 70s we we never for one i don't believe that ships of this size 
happened or uh, existed back then. You know, I, I don't believe that we had tankers of this size back then. You know, I, I, so when the key bridge was designed and everything, I don't, I don't know if it was really ever designed to have um, that size of a ship run into it. I don't think anything's really designed to have that size of a ship run into it. But at the same time, they they do like you see on this video here. Um, they do have things so that prevent ships, you know, to slow them down or or, or stop them even. Um, because like here, you know, along the bottom of this bridge over here, you have the long expansion like you had with the key bridge and whatnot. But at the bottom down here, you guys, you, you do see the um, the large, large base that it has. So if something runs into it, it's got a long ways before it's actually going to hit the main pillar that holds the suspension. On top of that, they have what's called dolphins. And all these are, are just are just cement pillars that are extremely big um extremely wide in circumference or diameter however you want to look at it um and they're just full of cement and so they have them stationed as you can see in front of each of these and then the pillars that don't have the structural uh base like these do they have the more of the dolphins in along the bottom right so uh you know i just i i wonder you know, obviously going forward, they're going to, they're going to build something, um, a little more sturdier and along the lines of, you know, stuff like this to where, you know, it, it, it's sad and it's hard, but it's kind of like, um, with airplanes and stuff, you know, you don't, you don't really know what kind of thing you have to fix until some sort of a tragedy goes on. So that's kind of the same thing here is that, you know, they didn't really prevent anything because there was never anything like this that was ever imaginable. And when you're building stuff back then, it, you didn't build stuff for the unimaginable like we do now. You build the stuff of that back then we built things that were more probable uh, because nowadays we live with things that are unimaginable happening more often than we than we'd like. But you got to remember the the key bridge was built back in the '70s, so I don't know if they specifically had any of those uh, these exotic types of safety measures um, in mind back then. So struck the piling, and it hit the bridge in such force that it knocked down the center span. And this is them dismantling the bridge. But notice this is the new bridge that replaced it. Notice around the main shipping channel, uh, there are these artificial islands. There are these dolphins that are stationed all around the area. This is a lot more protection. A vessel can still hit, but you don't physically hit the bridge. What happened with Dolly is it physically hit the bridge. This island would stop that and you would still have a massive shock damage. And it's not saying you would not cause damage, if not even a potential collapse. But the issue here is updating the infrastructure. And if you watch Tim B at C's video, he he goes through places all the time and highlights the fact that many bridges have no protections whatsoever. So what I want to do at this point. This game, you're not ready for. At this point is walk you through kind of the TikTok of the time that we got from the vessel data recorder. And understand vessel data recorders are not black boxes on planes. They don't record all the data. This is a fundamental flaw. The International Maritime Organization needs to mandate a new type of vessel data recorder that captures more information. For example, the bridge audio. There are recorders that capture the bridge audio, but unlike airplane cockpits where the pilots are seated, strapped in, and don't move, this bridge is 150 feet across. I, I, I mean, there's mics, but you won't hear it. There are alarms sounding. Uh, it is a big problem. So you don't catch all the audio, and more importantly, not all the data is recorded. So, so right out the gate, you know, we have uh, something that they can change. You know, so th there's positivity that's coming out of this. Um, you know, they're, we're going to try to, or I'm sure they'll say something about how there wasn't enough data that was recorded. So, you know, maybe, maybe that'll be something that changes out of this. Maybe they'll design a new system that captures every little bit of data. Like they were saying that there's alarms and everything that are going off. So it's hard to hear what everybody's yelling and saying and uh, all that kind of jazz. So. You know, just 
just remember it's a it's a uh massive accident and people did lose their lives but you know the main and key thing too is that we learn from this and we don't allow these kind of disasters to happen again this is what they got from the vessel data recorder uh you'll notice a time difference on the stamps the image on the left is from marine traffic that's on utc time that is four hours ahead of maryland time and on the right is the video Don't from the, the, leg the, leg, guys. The, that we've all seen and it is in local time so at 107 eastern daylight time the ship entered the fort mchenry channel at that point the two McAllister tugs were released and they did not return back to their home base they went into the harbor of of, of baltimore more for other jobs we're synced up here at 0124. At 0124, the ship was underway on a true heading of approximately 144, 141 degrees in the Fort McHenry Channel uh, at an indicated speed over ground of approximately eight knots, nine miles per hour. And you'll see right here, we see the dolly at that indicated speed right here, about 8.5 knots <laughs> at this time. Excuse me. Here it is. This is a minute before that it recorded speed of 8.5 knots on a course of 140 degrees. So that matches up perfectly. Okay. Our next piece of information is at 0124 and 33 seconds. And this comes from the video, not the VDR. The ship loses power. And again, we can see that very clearly here where we see the ship kind of without its power at that point. Uh, it is coming in basically on the same course and heading uh, eight and a half uh, knots heading down the channel. And based on what we have from AIS, it still seems to be uh, pretty much on track here. So, like you had said here, um, they actually got the information of what time that there, the power was lost from the videos. Um, the ADR or the VDR, I think that's, I mean, I don't know. I think that's the, uh, an acronym for the Vessel Data Recorder. Um, he says that they didn't get the time of lost power from the data recorder. Um, he actually got it from the video. So I'm wondering if that's one of the things that's not recorded on there. Yeah, you know, because they said that it's a lot like or it's nothing like the airplanes where it records everything. Um, so that's that's very interesting. Uh, it's real interesting on what information that recorder actually captures. This is a, a minute ahead. It's on a course of 141 <laughs> at 8.7 knots. So per the NTSB at 0124 and 59, numerous audible alarms were recorded on the ship's bridge audio. Around the same time, the VDR ship system data ceased recording. However, the VDR audio continued to be recorded during the VDR's redundant power source. Now, we're not clear here whether or not the VDR lost the ability to record instrumentation or it's the, because the instrumentation went offline because of the power outage. But we're seeing the ship progressing down its track. Okay. So sometimes I should just shut my mouth and listen to the video <laughs> because he just explained all that. So it essentially because the power went down, there should be backup power for the VDR that would automatically come up, but you know, they don't, they don't have information on all that. And that's why it's really, really important to remember too, that this is all, all preliminary things just today they went from turning it to a recovery operation to a um a, a what do you call it damn it my brain farts as soon as i come on these lives help me sway um retreat uh no not a recovery See? <laughs> when you're put on the spot it's like duh, duh, duh. um the, the, the cleanup, you clean know, up, that, yeah. that, I, I mean, there's a more precise word for it, but I can't, I can't come up with it right now. I'm trying to be smart, but it's not working. Um, so they, they just went from a recovery to into the cleanup stage because they figured out that it's just too dangerous to try to try getting everybody out of there. So let's, let's continue. So at 012602, the VDR resume recording ship da uh, system data. During this time, there were steering commands and rudder orders on the VDR audio. 
Okay, that is the key piece of information for me. The fact that they were still issuing rudder commands and that was on the audio, that means, that tells me that they still had helm control at this time. Understand, this ship is underway at over eight knots. You have the rudder, you should be able to navigate the vessel and coast underneath the bridge to the other side. Now, the question becomes is when the emergency diesel generator kicks online, does the ship have power going to the rudder? Okay, I have brought you back 32 seconds in time. Back. Okay, so before we continue on, I'm going to, I'm sorry that we keep stopping it. I just saw a good question by Brittany in chat. Uh, can we really try and account for every disaster that could happen when we build things? No, no, you can't. Not ex especially with, uh, with our society these days. Um, you can't plan or expect or, you know, you can't plan for the, what these morons are going to do. And I'm not saying that these people on this ship were morons. I'm just saying that if there's something that could go wrong that's miraculously wild and crazy and unexpected, then us humans are going to figure it out. And we are going to accomplish <laughs> doing it. You know, so... No, there's, there's really no way that you can, but you would think, uh, I don't know if there was two, missi two minutes missing from the black box. Uh, yeah, because the VDR, like he expressed on here, the VDR lost power, um, so it wasn't recording. So like, did, did Sway, are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. So in the video here, he actually explained about that where... When the VDR went down, um, they weren't sure it stopped recording and they weren't sure if the auxiliary power that was there or whatnot didn't bring it back up or whatever. So there might be like an overall of two minutes that are missing because when the power goes down and then they lose power again. So um, maybe that's another change that they're going to have to look at to make sure for a fact that that VDR, which is, is can, it's, there's no black box. It's called, and I learned that too. Uh, when I watched this video, it's, there's no, no such thing as a black box. It's just a data recorder and which is the VDR. So I believe it's just the vessel data recorder. And oh, okay. yeah. And I didn't know that until I watched this video either. So like I said, you know, the, the I'm going to have to correct myself a few times from the last video that we or the last live we had on this, because there are some things that I didn't realize and didn't know either. <clears throat> but he did state just a couple of seconds ago that when the ship lost power, the data recorder actually stopped recording as well. So the, but there is supposed to be a backup system to allow everything to continue to record. So they're trying, they're still in the investigations, of all that. Um, so it could be that over a period of time, because they, the, in the video here, they lose power. And I think it's like 56 seconds. Uh, they got power back up, something like that. And then um, the recorder started going again. So there, it could be that there's two minutes missing there um, because of that situation. Um so yeah, there, there, there could be. I don't know. Um, seems like. Did you read that in an article or something? Um, it was on a tweet. Oh, so yeah. I mean, and, and they're again, they're still in the investigation flag or flags phase. So there might be some red flags that pop up throughout it. You know, you never know. Like maybe they're they find out that the auxiliary power was working, or I, I don't know at this time, but. Uh, I could see how there was two minutes missing if like what this guy says is true, which I believe is true because this guy's a fucking genius when it comes to this stuff. Um, that when the ship lost power, um, the data recorder lost power as well, uh, because he actually has the results of the data recorder itself. And that's what he's going over right now is the actual, the actual factual results of the, the data recorder or the quote unquote black box. So he, I, I mean, I don't know if it's out there and about and whatnot, but uh, yeah, they, um, he actually has the facts of the, of the data recorder. 
So, um, but no, uh, I mean, I think I could see how you could lose two minutes during that time. If that's something that, uh, that, um, you know, was, was factual or is factual. What's going on, PJ? Glad to see you came in tonight. So, you know, I mean, it, it could turn out to be something nefarious, but it, also I can see in the, the situation here from like what he's saying, you know, that when the power went down, that's when the recorder stopped recording. Back to 0125 and 31 seconds. This is when the ship's power comes back on. Now the ship lost power at 0124 and 33 seconds. Power comes back on now, 58 seconds later. Oh, Emergency diesel generators are supposed to come on within 45, 30 to 5, 45 seconds. Now, so there's a big question I have right now. Did the emergency diesel generator come back online? Because that's supposed to be automatic. So this pretty face is Chief Engineer Eric Barton. Uh, he is the steam guy. He has a YouTube channel. And in this YouTube channel, he takes a look at emergency ship Gener excuse me, emergency ship generators. And he breaks down the entire process with it. And one of the key things that he talks about in here is that emergency service diesel generators, first of all, they're about the size of a truck engine. They're not huge. They are not designed to run the ship. Most importantly, they have two independent systems to start up. Once the power goes off, they're supposed to come on within 45 seconds. They can start either by electrical, pneumatic, hydraulic, or various different ways to do it, but they're supposed to kick on automatically. And most importantly, they have a separate distribution board, an electrical distribution switchboard. And their switches should be set, the breakers should be set to run some key things. So when the power came back on 58 seconds later, one of the things you notice on the ship is that the floodlights are on. Well, why would you run floodlights? That's something you wouldn't need. And it may, raises the question about whether or not the emergency generator came up online. And one of the things you'll see here are breakers for the whistle, for the battery charger, but more importantly, this breaker listed right here is helps you to start the main engine. The other key breaker that's on here, and I apologize for the clarity of this, but you can't really, you can zoom it in individually and see it, but this breaker right here is for the steering gear. So. The ship, if the emergency diesel generator came on, with the forward motion the ship had, it should have had rudder commands. And let's be clear again on this other issue, that if they are issuing rudder commands, the VDR recorded, again, I, I say again, at 012602, VDR resumed recording, there were steering commands and rudder orders. The question is going to be this. All right, we're back at 126 and 02. If the pilot, the master is issuing rudder orders the helmsman who's on the wheel would be sitting there repeating the order so for example if you're given a helm order of left 15 degrees okay <clears throat> so that there's some really important information right there that he gave and i think he's going to go back into detail a little bit more on all this from what it looks like here um because i've watched so much stuff since i watched this video yesterday um he posted this yesterday uh, but I watch too much YouTube, but anyways, um, and I think he's going to go into quite a bit more detail on it, but on that switchboard, if for some reason, those specific switches that a controlled the power to the emergency diesel generator, um, to, and also to the uh, helm's control, which would be the rudder. Um, if those two switches, for some weird reason, they're not supposed to be off, but if they were off, then that would have delayed the 13 extra seconds that um, happens here because the power goes down and 58 seconds later, the power comes back up but it's supposed to come back up in 45 seconds. So what happened in those 13 seconds? Why did the power not come back up? Or at least why did the emergency generator not come back up in the 45 seconds that it was supposed to come back up? That's one of his questions right now. And I think he's going to go into detail about that, but that is a very key thing is that on those instrument panels, 
if one of your switches for some reason if somebody hit it or uh there was maintenance being done on it and they shut the power off to it and they just never went back through and shut the power back on or turned the power back on whatever the case there could be a million cases on why those switches were off but if those switches were off then that would be a problem because I'm pretty sure like you're you have to do a lot of checks before you go underway there your pre check uh your pre underway checks <clears throat> and underway means when you start getting underway like when you start moving so you have all these checks and stuff and I'm sure that if it was part of the emergency system check to make sure all this stuff was on or in the correct position don't quote me I'm not sure I'm, I'm not on that 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 ship so I don't know all the emergency commands or what's what or what their checklist is. None of that. But my thought in theory is, is that it should have a checklist saying, look, all this stuff should be in the correct position before we get underway. In case something catastrophic happens, then all of our emergency equipment can come up. I would think that would be part of the checks. I don't know. Just pure speculation there. But I know for us, when I was on submarines, we had pre underway checks that we had to do and stuff like that was on there not that specifically but stuff like that was on there that we had to double check and make sure so you know um like i said i think he's going to go into detail a little bit more so we'll listen in the helmsman would say left 15 degrees and when the rudder got there they would say my help my rudder is left 16 15 degrees that's the audio i want to hear does the helmsman say he has rudder command or he or she has rudder command? If they don't have rudder command, there's a big problem here because if this is not the emergency diesel generator that's up and running providing power, then this means it may be the ship's uh, main diesel gen generators are on. And is there a helm problem at this problem? Does is, is there a problem in the main distribution board that is tripping out? Uh, there's a lot of other questions here about using the bow thruster of the vessel, the bow thruster consumes massive amounts of power if you are in limited power especially on an emergency generator you're not running the thruster okay so i know the last time this is part of my corrections from the last live that we had all right i said that i don't believe that these ships have them on there accordingly or uh, uh, evidently they do so i was wrong so i want to make sure that i correct myself on that um when they say bow thrusters those are um <laughs> sorry guys i was reading haley's comment in chat um the bow thrusters they are literally they're just water they're big jets that are on the front side of the the ship and they they suck water in thrust the water out of it and it, it's supposed to act like a a, a a thruster it's supposed to push the ship the other direction um no i didn't think they had these on had those on there i thought that if they did had them on have them on there that they would use them mainly only for docking um so that they could kind of push themselves straight up against the the dock instead of having to come in and crash against it you know what i mean um but evidently they do have them on there and uh they are used but they couldn't be used in this situation because there was no power to them whatsoever so and they 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 require a lot of power so i i stand corrected to my assumption from the last time that's why i go to the experts guys i'm not the expert so i like to listen to the experts Plus, a thruster is really only sufficient to move a vessel when you're below three knots. It's not going to do a lot. When the vest, the speed this vessel is going, which is eight point seven knots, right here. Oh, even if they did have it on. So the next right. input by the VDR is at oh one twenty six thirty nine. The ship pilot made a general VHF call for tugs in the vicinity of Dolly. Two seconds before that. The ship lost power the second time. Uh, ship went dark. At this point, it's a clear indication that, that they have problems. When he lost power the second time, obviously when power came back up for him, uh, he thought that maybe he had, or he or she may, may have had control. I, I don't know who the pilot is at the time, the lead pilot. 
thought they had control back, but now it appears that they don't have control, and it appears they don't have helm control. That's the reason that they would be calling the tugs at this moment. So our next piece of information is at 01-2704, the pilot commanded the dolly to drop the port anchor and issued additional steering commands. Now, again, the vessel is dark at this point. I'm not exactly sure that they have any helm controls at this point, but dropping the port anchor is another key moment in this evolution. So another YouTube video I'll recommend to you is Hope at Sea. This is how to drop an anchor. Now, an anchor has three kind of safety features on it to prevent you from dropping it. It has a way to lock the chain. You can see that right there. You lock the chain in so you prevent it from running. There's a brake on the windlass. That's a big wheel there to the right. And then you have a clutch that's engaged in there to release the, the, the vessel. Now, you don't need any power at all to drop an anchor, but you do need personnel up on the bow and they need to disengage that clutch. And what you saw right there is they had the riding pole disengage. You have that big, huge clamp, it's wide open. And then you saw just a second ago, them spinning the wheel, releasing the brake, that big, huge band that's around that drum. And you can see the anchor being go and you can start letting that anchor go. The issue with the anchor is this, this ship is going at eight knots. This anchor is not going to stop you. I know we talk about this all the time and what you see in movies, but an anchor is not designed to stop a vessel. It's designed to hold the vessel in place when it stopped this will provide some drag on the bottom and hopefully pull the vessel to the left it's the reason you're dropping the port anchor and not the starboard anchor at 01 27 and 11 seconds we have uh, power restored for the second time on the vessel we see power come back up on the vessel uh you're noticing the vessel having a huge plume of black smoke coming out of it now there's almost no uh wind at this time and so the black smoke is hanging low and basically what you see is that black smoke in the path of the vessel it's just kind of hanging there and that black smoke is not coming from the emergency diesel generator that emergency diesel generator is the size of a truck uh, uh, a truck engine it's not going to emit that much black smoke if you watch chief mccoy's video he talks about the fact that before you start the main engine of the ship, you have to blow out vapor and any gas that's in, or any fuel that's in there, excuse me, any fuel that's in there and get it out. If the engine stall stops running, it will have fuel oil in it. And when you, re in, when you pump air into it and you use compressed air to start a marine diesel engine, you're going to have a rich environment. You're going to have too much fuel in it. That's going to create incomplete combustion. That's what you get with the black smoke. So that's an indication that. So there he kind of explains a little bit about when, like just the, what it takes to start the engine, you know, um, you, you first have to exhaust any fumes or smoke or anything that's inside the engine, inside the ports, um, inside the motor, uh, the motor ports where the, the pistons and everything are. Because, like, if you have too much of that smoke that's in there, um, yep, it's just like flooding the engine. Exactly. Exactly, Doxy. So, I mean, you want to make sure you get all that stuff out of there so that it, because when you push that compressed air in there, um, that compressed air is actually what's going to create the combustion. If you go to press the com com compressed air in there and there's too much uh, exhaust or fuel or even air or anything like that, nothing's going to work properly or it's going to take a second and it's going to stall out so on and so forth. So you have to exhaust everything out of there. Then you have to build up pressure. Then you have to try starting it. So, so it takes a minute to start, you know, or it, it takes a little bit of time to start um, a diesel engine. It takes 45 seconds. So it's not, you know, it, it's not just a quick startup, even uh, diesels that, you know, you have uh, in truck engines, you know, they, when you, when they're in the cold, you don't, they don't like to start up very well. Right. And that's why we have what's called glow plugs on there so that they kind of warm the area up and get everything running and stuff. So diesel engines don't like to just, uh, you know, turn over all the time, especially when they're on massive, massive ships like this, because it takes a lot of compression to do so. So it kind of, that, that little section there kind of gives you, uh, kind of gives you a detail on or kind of insight on how long it takes to start these up they're trying to get the main engine up and running but if you haven't figured out what the issue is 
that creates a problem because what you're going to do is get the engine back up, but you may not be able to maintain it and keep it up. So I have questions right now about is the emergency diesel generator running? Does it have a load on it? Uh, and does the is is this an initiation of the main engine coming online once again? Also understand that this ship has a very slow speed diesel and on many ships, and I can't tell yet, I haven't been able to ascertain this, a lot of ships that the engine is directly connected to the propeller. And if the engine is directly connected to the propeller, you actually have to spin the engine the opposite way. And maybe they've turned the engine over and now they're trying to start it in the opposite direction. We don't know, but the engine was probably still spinning with the propeller going through the water. So you were probably still getting movement in the pistons to an effect. And that means also, by the way, that you're probably not backing down. Some people are comparing this to, well, when I back down my boat, the bow goes this way. This vessel probably never got into reverse. And I've talked to Marine. So what he's explaining there is that, you know, uh, the, the, the ship A never got to put itself into reverse. And like I was explaining to you guys earlier, just think about your um, your car motor being attached to your wheels, all right? That's kind of the same concept of the motor being attached to the propeller. Um, so if you turn your, if you turn your, mo or if your motor shuts off while you're driving down the road, if it's connected to the, um, the car, the pistons and everything that are inside your engine are still going up and down, right? Because they're connected to everything else. So your pistons and everything are still going up and down. Your cranks and your pulleys and all that stuff are till, still spinning and everything like that. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, that was my truck yelling at me. Uh, so, in, but in order for these, you have to spin them in the opposite direction to... to uh, to get the the all the gases and everything out of there right in order to start it so if for some reason that propeller was was still spinning from the original underway when they first originally got out into the main channel and started going down the river before they lost power if the propeller was still spinning that whole time and the motor was still um uh, was actually attached to the propeller and it was still moving then they had to somehow stop the propeller and get it going in the opposite direction, which it sounds like that that never happened. So the only thing that they were able to do is to really try to restart the engine off of all the shit that was built up and everything in there, if that makes sense. So I think that's why the second time the engine stalled is because they didn't take the step of um blowing out all the chambers and running the motor in reverse uh before they restarted it i think they just said hey we don't have enough time to do that so let's fire it back just turn it back over let's go like we 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 this shit's not happening now we don't know if that's factual or not because we don't know if the motor is at you know the power plant and the motor and everything is actually connected to the um to the uh the propeller you know they could be two completely different entities um we don't know nope. surveyors and engineers who agree with that it takes a while to stop spinning a l slow speed diesel propeller and to get it to go back it will take roughly more time than this to go from there was a test done on a very similar size vessel but this was done at full speed it took over nine minutes to get that uh, propeller to go from full ahead to stop now this is all taking place in four minutes at about half speed so it's unlikely that this is happening the other perspective you have here is the ship is it seems to be turning if you're looking at this on the video, a lot of people are sitting sitting there saying, why is this ship turning? Remember, the ship was coming in at about 141 degrees was the, the reading. So here is the reading at 0127. Again, we're right synced up here. It's heading at 7.6 7 knots, so it's slowed down just a little, about half a knot, and it has come off course about 11 degrees. And 
people are sitting there saying, well, the ship seems to be turning in the video. Well, it is turning a bit, but it's a perspective error. But the other issue is why does this ship have a turn? There's almost no wind and current at this time. I've, uh, I've looked at, at, at all the issues. Uh, there is a little bit of a tide coming out at this time. And that may be the explanation that solves this problem for us, why this ship starts kicking out. I'm going to change marine traffic over to the nautical chart setting here. Never underestimate the power of kindness. But of course, not that of a firebolt either. Fuck you, commercial. So you'll see the main channel, this big, huge white channel right here. And you can see the red obstructions right here. Notice how close the bridge is to the main channel. There's not a lot of room there between it. But the key thing is this white channel going off here to the left. This is the channel to Curtis Bay. If you have water coming out at this time, if the tide is going down, remember it was a full moon. If tide's going out and you're having a tide uh, movement here, and this is really close to uh, when uh, you're coming to a slack tide, but even if not, when you hit an area where water is coming in off your starboard side, it may push the dolly just enough to nudge her. And then you have effects called uh, bow su uh, uh, bank suction where you may see the ship start pulling and the bow will, will, will kind of nudge to the right and the stern will want to suck in toward the bank. And if you give it just enough a nudge, and the ship was just hugging, by the way, the left side of the bank there just a bit, that may be enough to cause the dolly, if they don't have rudder control, to kind of go off skew. And I think that's one of the issues that's leading dolly now to do this. If you had rudder control, again, a little bit of left, See now, I, I love listening to this guy because he he gives very factual um, information on things that you know could cause it. Um, it's not, I mean, yes, it's all speculation, obviously, but it's factual things that could cause it. It's not just always, you know, fantastical. So that's why I like listening to him and like. Uh, going through his stuff and going over his stuff because a lot of it makes sense. So what he's saying here is obviously, you know, in Baltimore, you have, by the ocean, you have high tide, low tide, slack tide, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> a lot of us know about all that. Um, so what they're saying is, or what he's saying is when the dolly was leaving, um, at that time, it was right around the time that there should be slack tide. Um, which means the tide's not going in nor out. It's kind of slack. Um, so you're you're at a good point of leaving without having the tide fight against you or work with you, like pushing you too fast or you know making you steam too hard against the the uh, the uh, current. So it, you know, it's kind of good to be able to get into the uh, slack tide. But what he's saying is that up here, there's this channel that comes out. And the reason on why that's important is because when you dredge these channels, they become deeper than the rest of the, the area around them, obviously. Um, but what ends up happening is these become channels where the water, it, the way that it reacts is different than the water up above. You know, you're, you're, you're making like a small jet hose down here when the water's going in and out when the water is going in then the water is going through this this area this channel relatively quickly especially down at the very bottom um you know a, a lot that area is moving a lot faster than um the, up here here in the top where it would be moving much slower because it's a much um higher elevation so that it, it just wouldn't the water wouldn't be moving in and out as fast as what it is down there. It's kind of being pressured through that that area like a like a tube. Um, so you know, it's the water is going in and out. And so what he's saying is that when the water come could be coming out um, for like the tide going out, so the water would be getting sucked out of there and pushed out. That could have hit the rear end of this boat just enough. You know, it's not like it's a this massive, powerful thing, but it could have hit the back of this this ship just enough to to turn it. 
like it is right now. He's saying that that could be a plausible explanation on why the ship is turned. One of many plausible explanations. Just like if you don't have rudder control, um, then, you know, you wouldn't be able to write the ship forward and all this other stuff. So just wanted to kind of explain what he was talking about in that situation a little bit. Off rudder and you coast under the bridge at this speed you still have you still have enough way on for the rudder to have control but if power is not going to the rudder and the rudder is locked in place then this could be the main problem at 01 27 and 25 seconds the pilot issued a radio call over the vhf and reported dolly had lost all power approaching the key bridge according to this uh time the mdta data shows the following occurred the uh, Maryland Transportation Authority duty officer radios two units already, one on each side of the bridge, to close the bridge. All lanes are shut down by the MDTA. I got to say, this is the really amazing thing. I mean, you had the general call go out on VHF <laughs> at 012639. Reports are that the pilot or the secondary pilot, there was a junior pilot on board, phoned into the pilot office to let them know they were having issues to warn the bridge. So within the span of, of maybe two minutes you're able to do it now according to mdta they have police on each end of the bridge because they have work crews there so they have a speed zone set up on the bridge to enforce it that's why there were police on each side and why they were able to shut down the bridge so quickly i'm going to run the video here for just a second because one of the things that you start to notice oh sorry guys. when you look at this is the ship begins a slight swing to the left uh, I'm not exactly sure if that's an indication that they get rudder control back on the vessel. This is at about 128 and 30 seconds. We start seeing an ever gradual swing to the left. Now that could be for a variety of different reasons, but we definitely begin to see it. By this point, the ship is nearly a half a ship length away from coming in on top of the bridge. And there's almost no point. This is Titanic hitting the iceberg at this point. And then you see that big splash at 0128 and 45 seconds. That is the water splashing up against uh, the pylons. The forward bow of the vessel, the starboard side, impales itself on that concrete pillar. And at 0128 and 50 seconds, you get the collapse of the bridge at that point. So right there, Doxy, is what I was kind of talking about earlier. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm smoking a bowl, so if you hear me cough, I'm just trying to clear my lungs a little bit. Uh, but no, that's what I was talking about earlier on why I think the ship's um, mainly not moving is because it impaled itself like that. Um, so I think that's also why it's it, it's stuck there. Um, but that was part of the earlier that I didn't want to get. Uh, too much into it because I knew that he talked about it in here. I didn't, I didn't know if he went into detail or not. Point, and according to the VDR well, at 0129, zero hours, the ship's speed over ground was recorded just under uh, seven knots from this moment until 0129 and 33 seconds. VDR audio recorded sounds consistent with the collision with the key bridge. That is 0129 and 33 seconds where we have the vessel at uh and then a few seconds after this at 01 39 the pilot reported the key bridge down over vhf radio to the u.s Co uh no don't tell me it's going on Man, like, uh, son of a bitch it's like the eighth time i did that somebody jesus take the wheel um but one of the things that i wanted to point out here is that uh I know the last time we were saying that, you know, like all the, um, all the emergency response teams and everything did such a great job. And so did the construction workers and so on and so forth. Um, I still want to point that out again, you know, that this could have been way worse. You know, we were pointing out on the, the video, the last time we did our live, um, on how the cars were driving back and forth right up to like a minute before they hit. And then, yeah, I mean, you can literally see where the last vehicle goes across and then there's no more traffic either way, but you know, it, it's still fast action, you know, because you got to remember the chain of commands that that all had to go through. 
um, in order for for that to happen. You know, they the bridge had to contact um, the port. The port had to contact the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard had to contact the police, so on and so forth. Um, so they, uh, yeah, Doxy, <laughs> we they had to contact to let them know that the bridge fell. Like, no shit. Um, but no, you know, so the, the, the transfer of information, uh, happened very fast. So I still want to give, you know, credit where credit's due with all these emergency responders and everybody that, you know, because really it, it, it was only how many seconds did you say Sway? 251. 251. So you know all of this that we're seeing happened in 251 seconds well from the minute that they lost power right sway yep okay just wanted to make sure i was putting out the right fact there so um no the ones that were still crossing were uh the they weren't actually crossing it was the construction crew the construction crew was still on there um the traffic itself though stopped just short of that i swear there were crossing when it hit until we watched the video on the last live we did on this on this oh i read that wrong sorry Brittany. yeah there there was traffic there was traffic crossing the whole time like civilian traffic crossing the whole time which i guess construction traffic is still civilian traffic but you guys understand what i'm saying pedestrians whatever you fucking want to call it no those are walk people walking whatever um but you know so that that the people that we saw go down with the bridge were the construction workers so uh but sorry i read yours wrong i thought you were saying that you you, you saw that but it wasn't never mind i'm just gonna push play that is 0129 and 33 seconds where we have the vessel at. Uh, and then a few seconds after this at 012939, the pilot reported the key bridge down over VHF radio uh, guys, to yeah, the US Coast Guard. So that's the TikTok taking you through. So again, the questions I have for NTSB is, but well, it is the drone, but it is the drone Lord. footage the on the Stop bottom it. right now Stop it. i swear i am on like i literally have to be in the middle of that button or it takes me all the way back to the beginning here <laughs> malarkey absolute malarkey all right so um with uh with the next couple minutes that are here listen to what his questions are because this guy he like he he, he like i said he he's he's one of the professionals to talk to in this industry. Um, he's one of the most informational, uh, people are contacting him to find out not just the news, but experts. And like, he's in, in with the community that deals with all the shipping and everything. So he's on the inside talking to people and finding out more information. Um, so, you know, listen to what his, his uh concerns are because those th they really are real concerns to progress in the industry of shipping going forward and how to like kind of prevent this for next time that can be tested almost immediately we can find out very quickly if there's contaminated fuel uh is it mechanical electrical computer uh, all those are issues you saw the engine room uh by chief mccoy uh this is not a thing that is uplinked to satellite that you can hack into however there are computer systems on board that mechanics and, and techs will come on board and do systems and things can be uploaded and it could be nefarious but it could be just a, a glitch and error uh, which which happens a lot uh, we discussed the issue about the tugs, why there were no tugs there. And I think, again, we may see that change across different uh, ports right now as they have these serious considerations about it. Uh, we saw the port, uh, the bridge did not have any uh, really uh, fenders, abutments, dolphins to prevent a physical strike uh, against the pier. Uh, we have a question. I have a question about whether or not the emergency diesel generator activated because that was 50. And remember, guys, when he says dolphins, he's not talking about putting like a huge pack of dolphins or a huge 
school of dolphins in front <laughs> and like having them try to, to you know push the ship out of the way that's not what he's talking about the, those are those big circular cement pylons that i was telling you about so don't be weird 58 seconds till power came on and it's supposed to be 45 seconds and if so was there rudder command did they have control of the rudder uh, this is not the ship turning into the bridge. Again, I think this is current and this is water coming out of basically Baltimore Harbor, Patasco River, the Curtis Bay area. And that's what's causing this swing, very gradual swing. But it's a swing, nevertheless, that allows the ship to turn in. So all these issues need to be addressed as we go forward. And the only way we can get that information is through the investigation. Last two videos I'll recommend to you. This one is by the Menorcan Mullet. Uh, this is Captain Andy down in Brunswick, uh, Georgia. Uh, Captain Andy documented and filmed his YouTube channel, caught the entire episode that was the Golden Ray. And so he knows a lot from observing about marine salvage. And he has a great video talking about what comes next in terms of marine salvage. He goes through. Okay. So the next minute here, he uh, just talks about... Um couple other channels so how are you guys doing do you guys uh sway how are you doing are you good or do you want to nope. are you getting I'm tired good. or what's nope. going on do you got to work tonight mm -mm. nope okay, good all right uh how's the chat feeling do you guys want to listen to a couple of the press conferences we've kind of gone two hours so i want to kind of get a feel for what you guys are doing You know, Sway, you can say these things out loud, like, especially, uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm just letting you talk. I wasn't, the, like, I was literally silenced reading your fact there. So if it's a fact, say it out loud so that I know it too. I don't have to be like a do and read. <laughs> so, um, Okay. You guys, there, there's two of you that are interested. Doc, how are you feeling? Because I don't see anybody else chatting, so. <laughs> I'm waiting for pizza. Bring me some fucking pizza, man. Damn. Got the munchies like a motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to make you guys listen to our uh, sponsors real quick. But first, I would like to thank Colorado Smoke and Butts Barbecue Sauce Company for sponsoring this video. Whether you're just beginning to learn the art of barbecue for your own family or friends, enter competition barbecue events, or a barbecue master, always start out with Colorado Smoke and Butts rubs and end with their sauces. You'll never go wrong. And we're back. Sway, so, do you have any more cool little facts that you want to throw out there while I'm looking for the press conference? Well, 
Don't fucking well me. Do what you do. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Mm. Let's see. So that's a no. Oh, I was looking. New, you have no new cool looking, facts. I'm looking. Oh, I gotta go to my. Well, they were my... quick to rule out terrorism. Supposedly. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> dope. No, I'm not. I, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying, like, to the people that thought it may have been terrorism, it's just like, come on, guys. Like, I can get with the the way the world is right now. Like, I can understand where that's a thought. Um, you know, because it's even wild. I brought it up. Um, I posted it even on the uh, the community tab. Nobody wants to watch the beginning of that movie. Um, or that nobody wants to watch that movie, Leave the World Behind, on Netflix. Because, oh, it was written by Michelle and Barack Obama. But I'm telling you, the opening, the opening scene, not the opening scene, um, one of the major, uh, beginning major scenes, like the family decides that they're going to go on vacation. They go to the beach, they rent a Airbnb, and while they're at the beach, a giant tanker ship, like just, is heading straight for the shore and ends up. You know, crashing into the shore with all these people on the beach and the ship lost total power and control and all that kind of stuff so like that's one of the opening massive scenes to that movie um like that's that was part of the attack in that movie so like i mean i would highly suggest going and watching that movie because if the ex-president and his wife <laughs> made that movie or had you know they didn't make that movie um, they gave details to help produce that movie, but uh, he, it's something that you might want to listen to. But I can see why people are like, "Oh, uh, conspiracy! This is an attack!" Blah blah blah. Because you know, the ex president and his wife helped produce a movie that this is one of the beginning scenes as the ship loses control and smashes into the into something, you know. So, and like on the beach. Not very many people were hurt at all. It just crashed into the beach. People were able to get out of the way, you know, kind of like with the accident here. So, like, I can understand where people are thinking, you know, it could have been a terrorist attack or something like that. I can understand that. Um, but still kind of crazy, huh? Uh, yeah. All right. Here is this video. Let me get to the commercial. All right, let me see. Okay. Um, uh, oh, bet I can fast forward through most of this. It's a fucking... The... Uh, okay. I got it. I got it queued up. Oh, SH, it, it's good. It's good. I liked it. And yeah, it's on Netflix. It's called Leave the World Behind. Yeah, they got paid like, I don't remember, $100 million for that. I don't know how much it was that they got paid for it. I just, I, I didn't look into that details. <clears throat> Very good movie, though. I'll tell you that. All right. So this is actually the update on the Baltimore Bridge. Uh, from today. This was earlier today. Um, let me minimize this to see how long ago it was. So this was, they streamed this nine hours ago. Um, you can find live streams that are going still right now on all of this. So if you want to keep up on more of it, you can go there. But this is the latest press conference um, as of nine hours ago. Let me first start by saying again that we pray for all of the victims of the key bridge collapse and also their loved ones. Since yesterday's briefing, we've continued to meet with families of all the victims. 
and they are on our hearts, and we are thinking about them now and always. Ellos están en nuestro corazón, están en nuestro pensamiento, hoy y siempre. All right, it looks like this one I'm going to have to play also, minimized. So it's going to keep wanting to load. Writers, I ask this. Keep offering them. The families, the first responders, they will continue to need them. Our state will continue to need them. Today, with the Maryland Transportation Authority's police headquarters, this is where our first responders and emergency personnel gathered the day of the collapse. We set up mission control immediately and got to work right here. And we're so grateful to the extraordinary work of our MDTA police. And we're thinking of all of our first responders, including the extraordinary men and women of our National Guard. This place holds a special significance for us. This place, in this moment, because in the time of that collapse, our work and since the time of the collapse, our work has only accelerated. And we have a series of 24-7 operations currently underway. Unified Command are conducting planning and engineering assessments 24 hours a day. We have assets on the water enforcing safety zones 24 hours a day. We have assessments on the dolly being conducted 24 hours a day. This is an around the clock operation. And we're going to ramp up our 24 seven posture in the coming days. I wanna give special thanks to Admiral Gilry and the Coast Guard who have been working tirelessly. The Commandant of the Coast Guard was here just yesterday and I had a chance to thank Admiral Fagan for her team's work and we're grateful. <laughs> now today, you know, this, uh... This, um, that's how it is for me with Hulu and, oh, you guys are talking about Netflix. I got you. Um, but, uh, the difference between today and yesterday, when I watched the press conference, yesterday's press conference, like the first thing that everybody that came up to talk about was money. Oh, you know, President Biden's going to do this. President Biden's going to do that. And then, um, you know, we're getting millions of dollars for this. We're going to get millions of dollars for that. And, and like, they weren't talking about the wreckage. They weren't talking about the salvage. And like, um, as you guys can see at the bottom here, like this is, this is an hour, over an hour long. The first 20 minutes of this was just, or first 18 minutes of this was just dead air. They literally had nobody up there. That's why I skipped through a lot of it. Um, but, uh, the, the taxpayers are responsible for the cost. Um, but right now, like, that's all that they kept talking about was money, 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 money. And then the, the politics, 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 politics. And it's like, wait, no. You know, tell us about the actual, actual things that are going on with the accident that happened. Like, don't get me wrong. You can still talk about what you're talking about, but don't make that the very first thing that each and every one of you come up and talk about. You know, it, it to me, it rubs me the wrong way because it's like you, you're making the priorities of what's going on in this situation. You're you're like m you're making them reverse. And to the millions of people that are watching and listening and paying attention, some of them have impressionable minds and some of them are 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 a little dumb and will believe, OK, well, the government's doing this first and uh you know, they're getting millions for this first and that's what we should care about right away when no, you know, the, the, the neighborhood of the people that live around there, um, the work for the people that live around there, uh, the recovery, how, you know, how this is going to affect the people that live there, how it's going to affect our nation and then get around to, you know, and, and like the, the people that passed away, the people that got hurt, you know, let us know about them and, just so on and so forth, you know, like prioritize what you're going to say in a little bit better of an order. That's why I hate listening to uh, stuff like this, because everything still gets turned to money and politics. No matter what you do, you have to listen to 
a whole heap of horse shit about money and politics before you can hear about what's actually going on. I'm not saying they don't ever talk about it, but it's like not at the top of their priority. But today, today, this um, uh, press conference, I do give them credit because they did put the people and the people that are working together and they they put a little more compassion into this one, a little bit more than everybody else or all the other ones that I've seen. But there is one guy, and you'll know exactly who he is. As soon as he starts talking, he's just straight political. He starts, you know, spouting money and politics just right away. And it's like, all right, see, you're the one that you're the one that annoys me and pisses me off. This guy made me mad. Now and always. He made you mad? Yeah, at the very first one that he did, he comes across as very arrogant the way he shakes his head he puts his chin up you know like he's yeah, better yeah. than everybody else yeah oh he just at, oh he irritated me so bad yeah i can see that now today i'll provide updates on the four directives that i've issued to this team and as a reminder first we need to continue to focus on recovery second we need to clear the channel and open vessel traffic to the port. Third, we need to take care of all of the people who have been affected by this crisis. See, that's what I'm saying is that Fourth, they're putting it a little more we forward. To, and we will rebuild the key bridge. This morning, this I received time. a briefing from Unified Command. The last ones they didn't do that. And I've spoken with leaders all across the state and also leaders from our fellow delegation leaders from all across the country and been working on who have been working on this response throughout. So first on our recovery efforts, as I mentioned yesterday, we need to do more work on clearing the channel in order to move forward. Oh, fuck off. Fuck me, uh... <laughs> this is a real uh, Doc, you know, they'll definitely get into um, how this will affect Baltimore. Um, and I think I, I think you made that comment. Like, that should be one of the key things that they're talking about as well. I think that's how you meant that comment. Uh, but they, you will talk about how this affects Baltimore. You know, and one of the things that I didn't realize is that this is one of the largest shipping ports in the United States for vehicles. Um, you know, farm equipment vehicles, coal, um, you know, not only is it the ninth largest in the United States, but it's also one of the largest for those few things specifically. And so now, you know, all these cars can't be shipped from this port. So now that you think about something like that, it's like, okay, well, it, the ships that, and they'll talk about all of this a little bit more um, as we go, but the ships that um, are there are going to have to be unloaded. Then all the goods that are on these ships are going to have to be reloaded onto a tractor trailer, or they'll have to be uh, loaded onto trains, uh, airplanes, I guess. Uh, I don't know how that would work, depending on what the, the product is, I guess. But these are going to have to be rerouted to different areas. And then they'll have to be shipped out from those areas. You know, and, and that's, and you think about it, if there's a, a, a tanker ship on here that has, that's just filled with cars, think about how many cars that is. You know, um, now, on these ships, they're not, not a, all the time are they filled with just one specific product. You know, a lot of the times these big tanker ships like this have several to hundreds of like, different products on them. But, you know, like uh, even the coal, if the fastest way to get the coal from one area to the other was shipping, now they have to figure out, okay, well, are we going to, I mean, the only other way that I know that they mass ship uh, coal is on train. Um, I think they would do it on semis too if they need to, but just think about that as well. So there, there's going to be a massive shift in 
some of the products that are shipped out of that area because they're going to have to be shipped in different ways. Um, and here in the United States specifically, you know, we're having shipping problems. Like we don't have enough truckers. Uh, to do what we need. So is the product going to get to where it needs to go on time? Um, you know, are, are we, there's, there's going to be, it's going to be a huge, huge uh, uh, supply chain issue um, because that bridge isn't going to be cleared. remarkably complex operation and our focus needs to be on unity of command and unity of effort conditions in the water make it unsafe for rescue divers and we're not just talking about weather and wind we're talking about debris we're talking about wreckage we're talking about pieces of a key break oh and sorry uh they do say in here too that you know, I, I'm sh the shipping company will be held accountable for some of the cost. Um, so you know, it, it's not like just the taxpayers are gonna are gonna suffer, but you know, think about it too for the United States. Like now, this is gonna put even more pressure on the taxpayers. Um, I don't know about us individually being in all different other states and stuff like that i don't know about that um but eventually you know it the shit always rolls downhill and us as taxpayers are usually the ones that get shit on so i'm sure we'll feel the 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 cost of it because you got to figure now that the shipping and everything for all this stuff uh is going to go up you got vehicle costs you got container costs you got all that stuff so, you know, the cost of those goods are now going to go up. So us as taxpayers, we're going to pay for it um, because now the price of our goods are going to go up even more for some of those specific items. Um, but also, too, you know, the government is giving them money right now so that the things that need to be taken care of can be taken care of immediately because it is important to get that back up and running, um, that shipping lane or a shipping lane in general. Even if uh, they can get ships through there that don't need as deep of a channel to get through, then that's better than not having the ability to get through there at all like they are right now. So um, not all the ships that are in the port there that are stuck or that are going to be shipping all that stuff is the size of the dolly. So they may not need as deep of a channel to get through. You know what I mean? So they they, they that's what they're working on now. But um the government is giving them the money now and i'm sure lawsuits and all that other stuff's going to come in the future for the company to pay for yeah. it that are in the water one of the mantras in the military that we learned was this mission first people always <laughs> and that's the mindset that we are applying to this work we are going to move as fast as possible we are going to ensure the safety of our first responders, and we are not going to compromise one for the other. We are going to do both at the same time. Right now, the conditions make it unsafe for rescue divers. But as soon as those conditions change, Colonel Butler has assured me that those rescue divers will be going right back in the water. I also want to remind everyone that this is a no drone zone it has been established and that is throughout the entire airspace surrounding the collapse this is not a game and please do not test my seriousness on this the instructions are simple oh, you got that finger going and too, they must be all drones are to stay away from the site got that finger in the head roll Scott key bridge <laughs> collapse period Don't test me, now second on clearing the federal channel and opening vessel traffic to the port. With a salvage operation that is this complex and this unprecedented, you need to be able to plan for every single moment. And this work is going to take time and we are going to continually assess and reassess this situation. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat over here of the, um, of the live itself from this channel. What are you, why, just a second, sorry. 
<laughs> over here. You guys can see the chat. Yeah. So, uh, swear to God, this guy took lessons from Obama. Watch this guy in the future if he's a Democrat. Yes. Like, I was just, just thinking that he acts. He reminds me of Obama. Oh, uh, it's just fun. It's just funny to watch people like people are just ripping. He goes, "Can he turn off the drama and talk normal?" <laughs> he doesn't know what the fuck he is talking about. He is way out of his league on this one. Empty suit. <laughs> this is difficult to watch. These guys have no shame. See, like that's American people are waking up to your guys' idiocracy. God help Maryland with the leaders like this. <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm not trying to smash the guy. I'm not. I just I was reading the chat next to it and I was just laughing. So that's that's why I stopped for a second because I was gigging. This morning, Unified Command assured me that the hull of the Dali is damaged but intact. The Army Corps and their partners will begin to move forward with the crane operations today. The north sections of the key bridge are going to be cut up and removed. This will eventually allow us to open up a temporary restrict. Damn it. Now I can't stop noticing it over there. Sway, do you see what this one says? Do you notice how he talks? How Do you notice how he talks at you instead of to you? <laughs> that's kind of like what you were saying is that's that's exactly how he talks. The channel that will help us to get more vessels in the water around the site of the collapse. And our friends at Trade Point Atlantic have agreed to help us with the process wreckage from the salvage and operation to the team at Trade Point. I want to say thank you again for stepping up. This is going to take time to clear the section of the class. It's not going to take hours. It's not going to take days. But once we complete this phase of the work, we can move more tugs and more barges and more boats into the area to accelerate our recovery. As of yesterday, 377 people were actively engaged in response operations in support of Unified Command. And we will continue to marshal people and resources to ensure that we have everything that we need to do this work as safely, as efficiently, and as effectively as possible. Now, I've said this before, I will say it again, and I will continue to say Is that a sign this language is not person just next about to me? Maryland. Yeah. Okay. This is about our nation's economy. No, there's just a, there's some chick trying to jump in the screen. Would you build a website? I see her. I just see the lady. With more than 200 million. I just million saw the hand going back and forth while right. he was talking. Yeah, she's she's giving his gestures that he's supposed to be giving. handles more for cars. You know what I mean? Like, more he's just straightforward up and down with his head wobbling and moving all over the place. Like one of those bobbleheads. And then she's just giving the rest <laughs> of the gestures that go along with him. We know what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, let me let me um, explain to you guys that this this is exactly what happens when you get out of the military and you go into the government work. You know, you just and, and, you know, you like, I, I don't know. I, maybe he's he's the gov he's governor more. So he's the governor of the state, you know. So like this guy doesn't have any normal human interaction. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> He, he don't know how to be a normal person. ...equipment more than any other port inside this country. And at least 8,000 workers on the docks have jobs that have been directly affected by this collapse. Our economy depends on the Port of Baltimore, and the Port of Baltimore depends on vessel traffic. Maryland's economy and Maryland workers rely on us to move quickly and it's not just maryland that is being impacted i'm also talking about the farmer in kentucky i'm also talking about the auto worker in ohio i'm talking about the restaurant owner in tennessee this fucking guy like why is it yeah why the fuck why do they have to be so damn dramatic about it god dang not that even yeah no i agree with you 100 percent and when you're being dramatic about it, try to be a little more factual because when people think about the automotive industry, 
they don't think of a well at least me i live in michigan but they don't think of ohio you know what i mean yeah like when you think of the automotive industry most people think of detroit uh you know i mean i would think i can't say that for a fact but being a little more factual about it michigan's the fucking automotive industry of the united states you fuck like (laughs) if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna sound so entitled like be smart about it you jag off (laughs) but this is what happens when military meets politics and i guarantee you he was an officer in the military and oh he yeah, was, definitely. He was in the military. He was one of those guys that his shit don't stink. That or yep. he was he was bullied in the military. So now that he's going into the government, he thinks he's cooler than everybody else. This is impacting all of us, and the nation's economy and the nation's workers are relying on us to move quickly and to move together. Third, taking care of our people. I've said it already. Mission first. Don't use drones. People always. Last night, the Small Business Administration accepted our request to approve a disaster declaration. And that declaration is now in effect. I want to thank the Biden-Harris administration for accepting our request. All right, there you go. You guys notice how this time, if you go to the other one, they didn't do this. But this time... They waited to the very end to thank the government and to thank money and blah, 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 blah. And you'll you'll see each one of these people do this, which is good. I applaud this. I don't applaud how he's talking to people. You can be a little more human and stuff. <laughs> Excuse me, I got the hiccups now. Instead of a damn robot, like Doxy said. But... Uh, yeah. Well... No, we'll be, we'll probably still be on, Haley. Ha- make a safe trip home. We're hiding Easter eggs, Haley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was. I can still see his pictures, but oh, goodness gracious. Because like I said he said on a non buttered yeah, I saw that. I think through the guy's head on a non buttered piece of wood. <laughs> God. <laughs> you guys i'll tell you you ladies i'm telling you like i mean i was telling sway about this the, when she was here visiting i'm like i don't understand what's up with all well i understand it because it's you know uh it, what happens to you middle-aged women but <laughs> like all you guys are that's all you guys think about that's all you guys think about is you're perverted as shit and then us guys that i'm in my 40s and it's like yeah the only like I got to get injected in the butt with testosterone and start taking like blue chew in order to fucking feel like a real man these days. Because at my age, we start losing our manhood. Like our testosterone starts to lose a uh, drop. Our sex drives start to lose. And then you guys are just starting to fucking rev up. Like you guys need a 22 year old young buck that can just go for two and a half hours at a time and not break the sweat. That has a fucking eight pack of abs so that his hip thrusters don't fucking go out on him in the middle of everything. Like, no, no, no. what happened? No, because that's when we that's when we throw a hip out. (laughs) What happens, Rowdy? Rowdy, I just told you what happens. You guys are horny as shit. You middle aged women (laughs) are all horny as shit. And if you don't believe me, go around these YouTube streets, look around, look all through the YouTube streets. Like, you go into these guys that are have their own channels and stuff, and they just have like nothing but old, older, middle aged women that are just like throwing vaginas all over the place. Hi, hey, what's going on, Candace? I I have no clue what kill shots even talking about. So it's oh yeah, you've never noticed <laughs> that before. You can't at least say that you noticed it. <laughs> Candace, my hip goes <laughs> out more than I do. Exactly, That's Candace. Hilarious. Right. You got you guys say that, but I'm just saying that if you had somebody that could do all the work for two and a half hours, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Like you guys would be down. <laughs> us guys, like that just sounds like a horrible time to us. Two and a half hours. It's like, no, I can get what I need to get done in ten minutes. Like I don't need fucking an hour, two hours. Like fucking like I'd rather 
go work out at the gym and I don't even like to move. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's what I'm saying, Candace. It's like you, you go and you go to these channels, especially like in true crime. Like if you yes. go over, to, I mean, l let's talk about it. Rowdy, you know, you go over to Ernie's channel. You got all yep. sorts of middle age you know 40s 50s 60 year old women and maybe even older just throwing vaginas all over the place then you go uh who is it uh the glare that you got women that are just throwing vaginas all over the place there that are 40 50 60 years old you know you got um who else can we talk about uh morbid you go over to morbid's channel and he's just like you look through his entire chat and it's just all females like 30 or uh, 40 50 60 year old females that are just angry as shit throwing vagina all over the place and it's like god damn like you know and then you got me who's on the internet and i'm just like what the fuck is going on here like nothing but cougars running all over the place all over these streets I'm just like this is this is terrifying. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. And <laughs> so I don't know. But we're gonna play this. Within a matter of hours. And I wanna personally thank President Biden for his constant support. Because of this declaration. Small businesses affected by the disaster can now apply for disaster loan assistance from the federal government. And these are low interest loans up to $2 million. They're going to help us ensure that our small businesses get the cash that they need to pay their bills and to keep people employed. The applications should be submitted online at lending.sba.gov by December 30th, 2024. I'm going to say it one more time so people can, so, uh, so for those who missed it can hear it again. Applications should be submitted online at lending.sba.gov and they should be in by December 30th of 2024. This declaration also empowers the state of Maryland to apply for new federal funding to pay for services and training for impacted workers and wage recovery. I've been briefed by the Maryland Department of Labor. They've assured me that they are working around the clock to get that application submitted ASAP. The Small Business Administration will also be establishing a business resource center on Monday. We will get that location information to you as soon as we know more. Now, fourth, on rebuilding. I said it yesterday. We cannot rebuild the bridge until we have cleared the wreckage. We're going to get this done. We will clear the wreckage. We will move the dolly. And we will rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge. We are going to do that because we are Maryland tough. And we are both from our strong. And you can bet on that. So in this moment, I'm going to hand it off to Senator Chris Van Hollen. And also, in order... We're also joined by and received briefings by leaders from the U.S. Coast Guard, the Maryland State Police, the Maryland Department of Transportation. We're also here with Baltimore City Mayor Brandon Scott, Anne Arundel County Executive Stuart Pittman, and other leaders. And now, I'm honored to turn it over to Senator Chris Van Hall. Now we got the senator. Now we got this guy. I don't know who he is, but he looks highly concerned. <laughs> All I need to hear. I'm reading the the chat next to this. Joe gave him lessons, just not on speaking. <laughs> Where's the insurance company for the vessel? He said anything important. If so, he missed it. <laughs> oh, these guys are just ripping on him. This is bad. You know, you laugh at it, but it's still 
it's just like oh, come on thank you governor and i want to thank you uh, mayor brandon scott uh, county executive pitman county executive oshevsky for first and foremost doing everything you can to support the families of the six individuals, the six souls that we lost. I know all the efforts you're undertaking to make sure they know that the community in our state stands with them. So thank you. I also want to say to our first responders, thank you not for just what you did at the moment of the crisis, but what you continue uh, to do and to the divers who are going to be looking at the wreckage so we can figure out the best plan uh, forward. As the governor has said, our priority is to make sure that all those thousands of Marylanders and others whose livelihood depends on the port of Baltimore get back to work as soon as possible. And that means, number one, making sure we have the channel open, but in the meantime, doing everything we can to support them and their families. And again, I wanna thank you, Governor, and the General Assembly for the fast work that you've undertaken uh, through emergency legislation to address that. I spoke this morning uh, to Acting Labor Secretary, Julie Sue. She is also, as you know, working with the Maryland team uh, to do everything possible at the federal level to support uh, those workers and those jobs as we work to get the channel open and the port open. Small businesses, uh, the governor mentioned the good news from today. Uh, the SBA administrator, uh, Guzman, uh, very quickly reviewed the state's request. Uh, and those are emergency low interest loans that will go to support small businesses, 4% uh, over 30 years uh, and a grace period during the first year. So small businesses can do everything they can to keep their workers on the job as we work to open the channel. Opening the channel, as you heard from the governor, that is the number one priority. And I want to thank uh, President Biden and his entire team for being laser focused on helping Baltimore or in Maryland in the aftermath of this emergency. So what is ClickUp? ClickUp is an all-in-one productivity software where you can manage everything and anything related to We've heard from the Coast Guard and we're gonna hear from them again. I wanna thank them. Uh, Admiral, it was great to join you and the, the Commandant of the Coast Guard yesterday to see a close-up view of the site, uh, the bridge, the ship, and everything that we need to do uh, to, to address it. It gave us a close-up sense of the magnitude of the challenge, uh, but we also know that we are up to meeting that challenge and doing it as fast as possible. And to the Army Corps of Engineer and the Navy and the others who are being deployed to do this job, I wanna thank you. And again, thank you to the Biden-Harris administration because the federal government will cover the total costs of clearing the channel so that we can get those ships moving again and get the port open. On rebuilding the bridge, again, Governor, thank you and your team for such fast work and thank you to President Biden and his team for such fast action. $60 million is already being made available on a quick uh, basis. Uh, to make sure that we can address the impact on surrounding traffic patterns uh, from the fact that the bridge uh, has collapsed. And then Maryland has also been deemed eligible. They've been accepted into the emergency uh, program uh, at the federal level. Uh, well, if this guy doesn't make you want to go to sleep, like sitting here listening to him and you just made you want to punch yourself in the face i almost fell asleep listening to it sorry that i let it go for a couple minutes and had to mute my mic i uh came in from the truck and had to take my jacket and stuff off so i let you guys listen to this boring fucker for a couple minutes sway are you still there or do you fall asleep Oh, I was sitting here talking. I was muted. Oh, nice. Perfect. Great. Mm -hmm. per but I'm awake. Woohoo! Oh. 
Yeah, I got about 15 more minutes in me, guys. So, you know, we'll listen to some of this, but you can go over to the news station here and look up the whole thing. I'm starting to fall quickly. Jeez, thanks, kill shot. <laughs> oh, you guys are welcome. Cop with a cop on duty. Oh, geez. Do yeah, but Doxy, you live, you live like, you you live in the the danger zone. Like <laughs> over there in New Zealand, it's it's not normal over there. Candace, <clears throat> what? Are you going to sleep? Am I going to sleep? I know. Are you going to sleep right now? <laughs> no. Why? Oh, okay. Sound like you were drifting off there for a minute. No. Stanima. Yeah. Who needs Damn. that? It, what? What are we talking about? I'm not. Don't try to turn it around on me because you were the one that was muted and falling asleep. <laughs> I like you guys. She does this to me all the time. Like whenever she's guilty for something, she tries to like wait a couple minutes and then blame me for the exact same thing. <laughs> I would I never think, do such a thing. I think that's just a woman trait. No, I would never do such a thing. No, not at all. Not at all. But listening to these two guys have made me extremely yeah. tired. <laughs> That's right, Brittany. I did nothing. Right. Of course. No, you guys, all you women, you guys never do anything. Ever. Never. None of you get ever. All you ladies that are in the chat and walk the face of this earth, you guys are nothing but angels. You, get, <laughs> you came straight from God's scrotum. Only, you know, you guys are purified straight from Jesus's, you know, fucking monkey sack. And, <laughs> you know, so you guys are perfect. You guys never do anything wrong. So don't ever worry about it. If anybody says you're doing anything wrong, you tell them just, just, you guys go screw right off because I came from God's nutsack. You just, <laughs> that's all you got to tell them. All right. <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> Christ. Do you guys hear a tone of sarcasm in uh, Gilshot's voice there? You guys can all kiss my ass. <laughs> Every one of you. So how many people we got in chat right now? Four, including Sway on panel. Yep. So I should have five kiss marks on my ass cheeks. <laughs> Do I want money? I want money. Well, yeah, I want money. You don't need money. I'm like, what the fuck? What? I don't know. I, Rowdy said I don't want money. See? You're supposed to be paying attention to chat, and you haven't been for the last hour and a half. Yes, I have been. Yes, I have. Oh, no, I forgot. <laughs> Never mind. Yes, you have. That's right. See? You know what? You know what? <laughs> Fuck you. I got a cute ass. All right? Fuck you. Okay? Not really. I'm just kidding. But I do have a cute ass. Yes, that's right, Rowdy. Oh, for saying. Uh -oh. oh, no, 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 no. I, I got him. I, I wrote it down. I wrote the script down for him. <laughs> He's just reading it off. Yeah, she wrote it. What you guys don't understand is Sway is actually like four and a half feet away from me, pointing a pew pew right at me. Doxy, you kiss Heine. Don't lie. Oh, Doxy. I've seen you kiss some Heine. Really? I've not seen it. Why, not are you seen watching it. Her, why are you watching her do such things? 
not seen it. That's what you just said. I know. <laughs> I those, those literally were the words that just came right out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, th that's what Sway says all the time right there. Yep, Immaculate Conception. All three of my children. Well, guys, I'm going to say that we're going to start wrapping this up here in the next few minutes because not only are we off topic, but I'm losing steam. I don't know how these people do like eight, nine, 10, 12 hour lives. Like, I don't get it. About two hours, I'm ready to give up. I can listen to those long line lives, but only if I'm doing something along with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like if I'm outside working or something like that, I can listen to a three, four hour live. Or if I'm at work, I can listen to a long live. But if I'm just like sitting at home or something, I ain't listening to any lives. Oh, you ladies just don't ever give up, do you? <laughs> no. I've never kissed anyone's ass. Candace just comes in hot. She just comes in swinging. Exactly. Candace is feisty tonight. Who? It's a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> Calm down. I was kidding. Yeah, I just realized that I was doing, I was, uh, you know, if you don't remember this whole live so far, I was taking care of content. I wasn't paying attention to chat. I didn't know. I'm glad I wasn't paying attention to chat. I would have been getting screamed at this entire time. I was trying out different chapsticks. That's why uh, chapstick. Mm -hmm. So you've just been <laughs> sitting in the car grabbing different types of chapstick for the last three hours and trying it. Like That's a lot of fucking chapstick. How chapped are your lips? Why are your lips like that? Like, I got a lot of questions. <laughs> no candace i know I, I i hope nobody in here takes any of us seriously i knew you weren't i knew you were just joking it's all right you can be feisty i gotta deal with the rest of these ladies in this community so and my best friend sway and so that says it all well this current one is pink lemonade <laughs> just don't be one of those ones that are like "Ooh, this one tastes good and you just start eating the fucking thing oh hell no <laughs> No, Candace, ain't nobody in here afraid of you. Not right now. I mean, I'm sure once you get fired up and start yelling at people, I'm, I might get afraid of you. But at this I have, moment, I have a cherry too. I have a cherry. I mean, cherry too. You guys all have cherries, but they're all pop. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a lot. To, I do. Your TC, does that mean true crime? I don't know what TC means. Oh, I'm I'm like this all the time. If I start yelling, then you better know that the world world's coming down. Yes, yes, that's very true, Candace. He's he's true there. That's very true. It's always the quiet ones that you got to worry about. I'm, I'm pretty quiet for the most part. If I get loud, that's that's when you need to. That's when you need to worry. When I get loud, just about every person with a vagina around me starts crying. Yes. it's true. I'm crying right now. 
kids that you know teenagers women old ladies if i start yelling they start crying it's just like a it's like a depth in my voice that people are like bro you are only five foot tall how the fuck are you yelling like that so i think that's what scares people the most is just like whoa how is that big of a voice coming out of that little of a person or like my voice resonates in your guys's ears the right way that it terrifies you or something when i'm yelling i don't know but whatever it is whenever i start yelling women automatically go to crying so i try to stay just like this so that women don't cry i said that too candace <laughs> yeah she did say that <laughs> yeah yeah stacy if you make yeah if you make the parental side of me come out you're not even gonna know what smacked you hey Haley glad you made it home safely I don't know I've heard of yeah Candace I've heard a lot of people say oh I wouldn't cry I just handle it and the next day I know they're bawling their eyes out I'm like what are you doing I thought like even if if they're on my side you know like I would I don't I would never want to like be in a street fight with a woman that like as like my you know like my sec like my sidekick or whatever because as soon as I'd start yelling at the individual next thing I look over my sidekick would be bawling their eyes out and it's like God, <laughs> what are you doing like we're, we're supposed to be kicking ass here why are you crying I'm not even talking to you like this has I'm not even like looking at you or directing this to you towards you many I, people think oh. I have no emotions at all that's how well I handle them you yeah Oh, you guys know how much she cries uh, off the phone? Like, cries. I've never cried. And cries. <laughs> and cries. And then cry. No, I'm just kidding. I'm being sarcastic, obviously. My husband is six foot five and yelled at me one day because I was going to take pictures of a wild hog in our front yard. I had never seen one. He said, I thought I was about to square up with him. You know, I don't know what it is, though. It's like when large men are yelling, women find that attractive and cute and cuddly and like, <laughs> oh, well, you big, you big teddy bear, come here. But when us five foot got five guys go get crazy like that, you guys are like, this dude's fucking psycho. He's going to take out the entire room. Watch out. Oh, no, the world's coming down. But when you got a fucking <laughs> ginormous fucking screaming at and yelling at people you're like oh give me a hug <laughs> candace you've never like cried when your dad yelled at you and you felt that he was like disappointed in you or something and he was yelling and you knew that he was just like disappointed and upset with you and you didn't be like oh you're just like nah fuck you dad we're handling this <laughs> i can honestly say my dad never yelled at me my stepdad did though no my dad never yelled at me he always just had that disappointing voice he never so you're just always like god damn it i was an angel Around my dad. Fucking rowdy. <laughs> I would have, hey, Haley, I would have taken a picture of the, the hog too. All right, guys, I'm sorry. We're just 
I, we got a whole crowd full of hard ass women that aren't scared of shit <laughs> that are just ready to fucking bite everybody's hair, head off. They don't care if they're seven foot tall or two foot one. You're just ready to fucking kick everybody's shit in. Is it just like, is this what you guys do? You guys just come in here to an intense, intentionally troll me the whole time by disagreeing <laughs> with every fucking thing I say? God damn. I love each and every one of you, but I swear to God, you guys fucking hate me. I'm pretty positive about it. I'm starting to wonder about Sway as well. <laughs> I don't hate you. Pretty sure she's starting to fucking hate me now as well. No, never. Is up here arguing with me now? <laughs> oh, Ra Rowdy, we're coming. Rowdy, you, got saying you have to go to bed. <laughs> oh, you got 30 seconds. We're coming up on three hours. And I, uh, oh man, like, if you guys want to see me past the three hour mark, you're going to have to put me on Twitch where I won't get in trouble <laughs> and I can just fucking rant because things are getting bad. It's just maybe I lived on the streets for years. See, I don't know if I, I don't, I don't think I would have been scared of the hog. I would have still tried to take a picture of it, I guess. I mean, I know it could kill you, but they're so cute. That, no, so it, that's called a pig. Oh. Pigs and hogs are two completely different things. Oh. Wasn't she talking about a hog? She's talking about a hog. Yes, yeah, you're talking about a pig. Oh, okay. Pigs oh, yeah. are the little pigs, pigs are, are the little the the little pink things that you can have running yeah. around your house. Yeah. Yeah. A hog. So cute. A hog you can't have running around your house. But all right, guys, three hours is up. I love you guys, and we'll probably be back on again tomorrow. We're going to talk about um, Boeing and what Boeing has going on with all of their um, airplanes and yeah. uh, a lot of the, a lot of wild, crazy shit that's going on with Boeing. Not again, not conspiratorial at all, actual factual information. Um, so kind of, <laughs> It's going to shake you guys up a little bit about hearing about Boeing. Um, <laughs> like, there's one fact of Boeing that uh, they did an investigation on Boeing and it found out that at some of the Boeing facilities where the airplanes are put together, they had to um, uh, actually lock up and put a security code and everything like that on the, the bad part in the... Um, defective parts room because to meet deadlines and stuff people would go get the defective parts uh work, work on them to where they would work minimally correct and then th go and throw them on the airplane <clears throat> especially if they weren't uh like um a massive deal or whatever you know what i mean like something that's not going to make the plane crash and so that like people were sitting there like oh we don't have the part for this so go to the defective area and get one of those parts whatever one looks the best and that's not a conspiracy that's factual um and then they have like on some of their airplanes they have emergency doors on there that have uh seats right next to them and there's a plug that goes in the airplane that makes it not even noticeable that there's an emergency door there so, like, you can be flying on the airplane and right next to you is the emergency door and you have no idea that it's an emergency door until the thing, like, just pops out. Which they've had issues with that, too, where um, they've done seal testing, which you can. I've done it for, to test seals at home, <laughs> you know, yeah. or, like, the seal on my tire of my car, but so not not an airplane. Um Look at my previous comment. What? I think she's talking about the whistleblower. Yeah, he's one of them. Yeah. And they, they talk about him. He ended up, the whistleblower ended up dead. 
yeah, suicide with two uh, pew pews to the back of the head. Yep. Somehow he was able to do it twice to the back of his head in his vehicle mm -hmm. in the parking but lot of his hotel, in the hotel on the same day or on the final day of a trial that he's been part of for years. That's basically, you know, most of his life work. <laughs> like it's just crazy. And again, factual information, not conspiracy theory at all. Actual factual information. Uh, but yeah, that that's part of it. Uh, what, what, what's the other thing? Oh, they had a to for Boeing to compete compete with um, its competitor. They implemented a safety system that automatically trims the airplane. So if because the way that it'll explain it um when we go but like the way that you're flying and in order for them to make them faster and all this other stuff and be able to can uh to fly correctly they have to fly with the nose pitched up a little bit and uh so what ends up happening they had overall boeing to keep up with technology and everything had to implement a system on their new 737s or 747s i can't remember which one but it automatically adjusts the airplane to certain situations um so that it's flying in more of a, like a quote-unquote comfortable way and um but what ended up happening is to save money to save time and everything like that they implemented this system onto the airplane but never told the pilots that the system was implemented nor did they tell the pilots that there is a an a system on board uh that will automatically fix the computer or fix uh the airplane the way it's flying for you so like the pilots were sitting here fighting against this computer system that they didn't even know existed um trying to get the airplane corrected and then like the default for this thing uh is that if it all of a sudden reads that the plane is pointing too far up that it'll automatically pitch the nose down so it'll basically just send it like if it malfunctions or anything it automatically pitch it pitches the nose down it sends it plummeting to the earth and like there's already been a couple of uh recorded instances where this happened um and again you know they didn't want to have to change or yeah they didn't want to have to pay for the change in all the manuals um they didn't want to have to pay for all the the pilots to have to go through all the training they didn't want to have to pay for the training they didn't want you know like they were trying to cut costs like crazy so they just implemented this but never told the pilots about any of it never even taught them about any of it so it's crazy but all right guys you got seven extra minutes out of me we'll probably see you guys tomorrow night we love you have a happy easter Try to enjoy the day with the family. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Like I said, we're going to be doing some um, members-only lives here real soon. So make sure if you guys aren't a member, then you guys sign up to be a member because that's the only way that you're going to be able to join those lives. Take it easy, guys. Love you. Night, everyone. Night, everybody. <laughs>